Welcome to the Melbourne Cricket Ground. For those joining us for the first time, round 12 clash between Richmond and the West Coast Eagles. 14th and 16th on the AFL ladder. An important game for both these clubs. The wooden spoon looms over both of them, but the West Coast Eagles still a finals chance if they can win this afternoon, guys. And that is their lineup with a couple of late changes in it. Yeah, Swift and Selwood out of the side for the West Coast Eagles. Nikoski and Brett Jones get their opportunity this afternoon. Look, it, it, they've got an area where, if you're looking on paper, you think that Richmond uh, will really struggle to beat the West Coast Eagles. The domination should be with Nat Nui and Dean Cox to give first use to the likes of Prittis. But this might give themselves a real good chance, but I was no doubting that. I, and Cox and Nat Nui starting on the ground, so they get elected to go tall, so one of those boys will play in the forward line. You see the Tigers run out. A very young side, which aren't they? So they are the favourites for this game, which is quite staggering. But they've won one game, and they're on the bottom of the ladder. Absolutely, but their lineup, strangely enough, uh, looks a little better with each passing week. We have a look at the Richmond lineup. We just have a look at their goal to goal line there. I really like it. Jackson back into the fold. He'll probably play in Prius. Jack Revolt, we talked about. He's the danger man. Griffiths talking to Damien Hardwick there, expecting big things from him as he grows into his body. Graham and Vickery got a big job on Nat Nui and Cox, and of course, Ben Cousins, ex West Coast Eagles player on the bench. But Daniel Jackson, as we see Deledio there, it's amazing his form. He leads Richards in disposals, effective kicks, handball receives, and rebound 50. So I would think, looking at those stats pickers, you'd have to put a defensive half four type on Delidio. Yeah, no doubt. He is a terrific player. I think he's uh, an underrated player in a lot of ways. He's only, he seems to get a little bit of stick about his form in his early part of his career, but he's won two BNFs. And there's Jack Rewald, of course, who uh, six goals last week. He's a very, very nice player and attracts a lot of the footy. We oh, know no that's, but he's oh. the number one target inside 50. Yeah, well, they go to him 90 times. The next player is down to about 11. And of course, John Warsfold, the two keys, Stop Rewalt and stop Deledio. The run of Deledio, we know the midfield's going to win some ball, but stop Rewalt and double teaming in the air at every opportunity, Pickers. Couldn't agree any more with you on that one, Spud. The rock dominance I mentioned just briefly in the West Coast team. They should have an advantage with Nat Nui and Cox, but young Graham and that will have their work cut out this afternoon, but they'll be looking to give first uh, first possession. And, of course, the Tigers, we said, they've been very good against their opposition, ranked one in clearances and contested possession. So that suggests to me that Prittis and the Ruckman for the West Coast Eagles need to get inside and get down and get dirty. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, gee, they've got a, it's, a, it's a starting point for Richmond, isn't it? Cochin, Martin, Delidio, Foley, they're only young players. This bloke's a beauty. Terrific clearance player, Dustin Martin. Um, and there's no doubt in that. Josh Kennedy, he's going at set shots, 85%. 23 goals, four. But more importantly, he's kicked 22 goals, one from the corridor. And from 41 to 50, this is amazing with his run-up, he's kicked 15 goals, one. So you, you think, if you look at his run-up, you think, well, it's all over the place. But he nails it every single time. You see him here practicing outside forward 50. We have a look at this run-up, a little hop, skip and a jump, another hop, skip and a jump. And then, of course, bang. Well, the way it goes. It's all about being comfortable in your technique, isn't it? We see Daniel Connors, the bad boy of the Tigers, back in the lineup this afternoon. He's had good form in the VFL, so good to see him getting another opportunity. And good, heavily strapped up wrists and elbow there. Yeah, Daniel Connors. Yeah, it's a big, forgiving game at times football, but he needs to earn the respect of his teammates, no doubt, Daniel Connors. Big game coming up here at the MCG. Damien Harwick, finally a win a couple of weeks ago against Port Adelaide to break his dark up against a more mature coach, John Worsfold, just the eighth person in AFL-VFL history to play 200 games and coach 200 games for the same club. First since EJ Witten to do it. The bounce of the ball here at the MCG coming up straight after this break. First time this AFL season, the Richmond Football Club, the favourites, heading into a contest. The West Coast Eagles, strangely enough, unfamiliar territory for them, coming in as the underdog. They have won here this year, the West Coast Eagles, which is something that Richmond hasn't done at the MCG this year. Toss of the coin, and they're not sure who's won it yet. <laughs> Just trying to work that out. Did we see who actually won that? Chris Newman walks away. And Louis Bow 
waters was okay, a bit inexperienced because right. the glass is out injured at the moment, so not used to tossing the coin. So even if you don't win more. it, well, even if you don't know it, you just point. You'll want to go that way. You just do the Ted Witten. <laughs> we'll go this way. Chris Newman won it apparently. Did he? Okay. So, well, we, we know that West Coast are going to the right of screen anyway. We did establish that, didn't we? I think we did. Yes, <laughs> yeah, which is good news. In a tight huddle, and it's a massive game for the West Coast. They've never won a spoon before. They win today, and they won't win the spoon but they lose today and all of a sudden they're just one game and percentage ahead of Richmond on the AFL ladder and there's Ben Cousins might be his last ever game against his old team yeah. the West Coast Eagles and there's Shane Tuck his last three weeks averaging 30 disposals and nine tackles started in the VFL under Damien Hardwick but yeah. he needed a big strong body and allows Cochin, Deledio and Martin to get to work that big strong body of Shane Tuck so he's super important out here today he certainly is. He's uh, having a very, uh, very good season, Shane Tuck, and he's a very good clearance player. We know that. Big advantage in the ruck today, the West Coast Eagles. They're with both Cox starting in there, Dwayne. And Nat Nui in the middle, and they can take their pick, I suppose, who goes for it depending on how straight the bounce is. It's not, probably the tallest ruck rover in the same. Take a pick either one. And there's there. the defensive roll on Brett Deledio there. Yeah. No waters. Good matchup. I like that. Yeah, he might have a bit too much, too much speed for Bo Waters, you'd think. Deledio. I think Angus Graham's going to have his work cut out against the two big blokes. Doesn't know which one to go up against. Looks like it's Big Dean Cox. Daniel Jackson tagging Nick Natanui, who's in the middle for this pull up with Cox. And he knocks it down to Natanui. Almost the plan worked. Cochin driven into the turf no free congestion umpires today Matt Stevick Shane Stewart and Michael Jennings plenty of holding and blocking the umpires are trying to sort out and there's the double combination almost working again Cox was the ruckman but Nat Nui was favoured by the ball up more congestion another ball up here we go Sputter that's the one we talked about that's where Rewat wants to be, McKenzie, yeah. the opponent. Well, he just has to guard that space. There's no doubt Shannon Hearn, he and one of the halfback flankers, they have to come out and guard that space in front of Rewald also. So the double right combination works. They get the clearance here for a hold, and Cox to Prittis. Thumps it along. Kennedy's under it. He's the target, goes, and almost got it. Off some hands, Embley. Shoots the handball back towards Rosa. Beaten for it. Graham got the handball up. Moore. And Martin, they work it to the wing. Race on. Getting their first king. A little shimmy on Hearn. And beat him with it. Hearn some pressure on. And forced that kick out of play on the full. Jake King's had some important roles the last couple of weeks in the midfield. Got a Del Cito last week. Shannon Hearn, who does like to kick a long ball occasionally, realises it's not the right thing here. Jones, one of the late inclusions for the West Coast Eagles, so two late changes. Nikoski and Jones in, and the two outs, Swift and Adam Selwood, if you've joined us late. Bo Wilkes, half back. Back again, Ebert. Bounce through half back, and another of the inclusions, Nikoski gets to it, takes the mark. Waters over the top if he wants him, and he does want him. Half forward, nice build up, maintaining possession. And a terrible entry inside 50. In fact, it won't even travel inside 50 off the smother. It's out of play and we're still scoreless. Well, it was a bad kick, but I like the fact that they hit Bo Waters up because he's Brett Deledio's direct opponent. You need to lower your eyes and make Brett Deledio defend. You can see there, Shane Tuck. He's running with Nat Nui while well, he's playing as typically a ruck rover, if you like. Emblick is smothered. Rosa tried to slap it out. Jackson tried to slap it on. Schofield to Cox. The set-up kick is wide. Kennedy. And thumped away cleverly in the end by David Asprey. Well, well picked up, Pickers, because Dean Cox is trying to get Graham out of the play to make Nat Nui, as we see there, very good spoil, make Nat Nui rack against Shane Tuck. Yeah, Asprey could have gone for an arm there, but went for the ball and got away with the spoil. Edwards tambling more. So Wobbler and Jones back with the flight. Wants to stay in the team. Uh, very good courage. 
That's what you want when you're late inclusion. Half Shepherd from Schofield. Handball over the top. And knocked away from Scott Selwood. Brotherless today. And we'll get a ball in. There you can see again. Good courage there from Brett Jones. And that new is pushed to the goal square. And Rick McGowan basically plays as a defender with Nat Nui in the goal square for the West Coast. Well played Graham, although the handball was terrible. Moore attacked it, and now he's got it, and they attack him, and he might be... No, he's not in trouble. So there he is in the goal square, one out. Yes. Look at the handful, if it gets in there quick and high. Might be a handful anyway. <laughs> That's the hard part, even. Drag down, clever tackle, no prior opportunity. Yeah, the worry for McGuan with that one is he's not quite sure whether he wants the ball in the air to that new <laughs> ground level. I'd, I'd probably want the ball in the air. Yeah. Because when it hits the deck, his recovery is unbelievable. I think what he needs to do is when he spoils it, spoil it a long way away. Make <laughs> exactly sure you get it out right. of your area. Don't just palm it down as some defenders do, hoping to go back yeah. and get it again. The 12 rows back's a good start. Yeah. At least you know it's going out of bounds. <laughs> right. <laughs> Huge pack around this ball up. Cox, Cochin, dispossessed, Rosa dragged down, Tambling the tackle and the crowd enjoyed. Seeing Richie Tambling lay that tackle and we'll get yet another ball up. Maybe a calm before the storm. We're going on world record pace at the moment, Brian, for bullets. <laughs> Start of this game, we've been going less than... Uh, Four minutes, and I think we've had something like nine bullets. Cox inside. McKinley had a good piece of that. Waters slips the handball out. And kick smothered. Going back in, trying to get it out was Ben Nason. Unsuccessful. About 15 different hands touched the ball in the meantime, and it's still tied up in the middle of them all. And Dustin Martin with the clearance. OK, we should be away in space here. To the wing, Hearn and King. King sends it inside 50. Rebel under this. Can't get a fly at it. Back of the pack. This could be the perfect start. Strolls in, kicks the goal, and Richmond are away. Okay, Spud. What happened here? Well, Eric McKenzie, we talked about pre game. You just got to stay goal side. You know, Rebel's going to turn around with a high ball. We just have a look here comes up the spoil had to go forward that was the key but Eric McKenzie was in no man's land had to guard this space all the dangerous space was between Rewalt and the goals that is just bad positioning bad 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 for those who didn't see our pre-game show you did explain that perfectly Danny about the space behind how much Jack Rewalt likes to use it how much his Richmond teammates know he wants to use it. Well, they go to him 90 times so far this year, Dwayne, and the next best target is Mitch Morton, 12. Yeah. So you know where the odds are. The ball, one thing the spoil when it went forward, but Eric McKenzie had to play goal side. So Graham wins the free. Hands it off. Daniel Connors back into the lineup. Kicks inside 50. He's got oh, it yeah. again. He's That's... not the Danny Minogue of the Rewald family anymore. He is the king. Now, that was actually better positioning from the defence, but it was just a clever mark. There was some space to lead into. He had two opponents. He's just a bit too good. Well, the thing with that is, you need support from the front, and Shannon Hearn went half-hearted. If you're going to... you just got to go in there and put the ball 20 metres away. For two in 60 seconds from 48. Strikes it nicely. Splendid. He's got two. They've had two entries for two goals. Two entries. Both went to Rewald. Both times they've got a goal out of it. It was actually a nice kick. It was Connors who kicked it long. And, yeah, Hearn needed to at least take Rewald's body on that occasion. If you're going to go third man up, you just have yeah. a fierce desire to take the body or the ball. He's tried to mark the ball. Like, like seriously, Shannon Hearn, you've got to play the odds. You know Rewald's on fire. Kicked six last week. He's kicked 20 goals in the past four games, Jack Revolt. Four, six, four, and six last week against St Kilda. That was in a losing team. He's got two already today. From the ball up, Cox knocked it down, but Tuck gets the clearance. Handball over the top to White. Manhandled a little. Little slip up 
Embley, Prittis, Hearn, Embley, Hearn, Tuck, that's a throw, got away with it, White looks up and the rebound says, back to the square, that's where I want it, and White goes all the way for a behind. Well, yeah, on side, they've had three inside 50s, Richmond for three scoring shots, so great efficient football there. Yeah, that is a throw every day of the week, or an assist, shed away you want to look at it. <laughs> Yes, it'll go down as the ladder, score <laughs> assist. Hearn. There's that 80 metre launch. And a huge grab. There's a free in the middle of it all. Tucks Paul. He has a terrific mark by Delidio. Absolutely. To go with the boots. Inside 50. Oh, yeah. And here he is yeah, again. This is not good enough. Well, Spud, it's, it, where's their support? Yeah. Eric McKenzie's going to have a... Awful afternoon if he's not getting any support from his teammates. Well, we've just seen the Delidio grab there, the free kick. But you're right, you know the ball's going to rip up, so you've got to play the odds. And look at the West Coast players just arm on arm. If someone else jumps up and kicks six for Richmond, you'll wear it. Yeah. Double team this guy, he's on fire. From directly out. Oh. Jack Rewalt, three goals, West Coast Eagles yet to score. It was a really good kick by Tuck. He just, there was a space there. There wasn't a hell of a lot of space, but the kick was well weighted. And, gee, this play was in really nice form. The kicking was a magnificent 65 metre bomb. Lovely mark by Rewa. Free kick to Tuck off the ball. Now, the Tuck kick was just weighted beautifully, but McKenzie just didn't get any support from his teammates. Really needed a, a teammate there to come in, even Stevenson, to put an arm in. I know I've been frustrated over the lack of uh, support from McKenzie, but you've got to understand that Rewald is on fire, so you've got to give credit to Jack Rewald as well. Oh, absolutely. He's playing magnificent football, Spud, but how much time and effort would they have gone in? That, we know the numbers. They've kicked the ball 90 times to him. You just say the next best option is 12. Well, I think that now's the time. You've got to throw your ruck and back. Get Nick in the, Nick Nui in the ruck and get Cox to stand 20 metres in front of him. Tuck to Edwards to White. You guess to Rewald. He he's again. on the move. He's got this. He's up. <laughs> How's this for a start? He'll line up for number four, and this would be for 39 for the season. He would join Favala and Pavlic on top of the leaders' board in the pursuit of the Coleman. Well, you've got to pull the trigger now. You've got to get your half forward. Bo Waters, I know he's on Delidio. Get him to stand 10 metres in front of Jack Revolt, and then need the double teaming. They're smashing him at the clearances again. Tell you what, we'll have a look at this kick for his fourth. Not There's your leader in the race for the Coleman. Jack Rewalt, four goals. Unbelievable start by young Rewalt. Now, their best defenders sitting at home, not nursing a sore groin, the captain Darren Glass. But that sort of delivery, uh, very difficult, doesn't matter if it's Matthew Scarlett or Darren Glass. This kick by White was a cracker. Look at that. Oh, that's just a magnificent kick and a strong mark. Mind you, I don't think you'd have four at this stage if Glass was playing. I can understand your pessimism, Leon, given that the glass is a half empty <laughs> as it stands right now for the West Coast. Shane Tuck started well, boys. He's had five contested possessions, two clearances. So he's absolutely on fire, Shane Tuck. Nat Nui tried to get his own clearance. Shepard does. Rosa slips it wide. Stevenson short. Off hands. Farmer. They're away here. Connors. Cousins against his old team. Heading White Newman and Pack the Marcus. Daniel Connors slips a handball inboard. Asprey is the half forward to Vickery. It's a good hit up that. Yeah, they've got Bay Waters now pushing back in the hole. You can see him there at the top of the screen for the long kick. He's got to get back strong and hard. Well, he will, he's tough. He's got two to beat here, Rebot. Well, that's good. Can't beat them both, and that's the plan, as you mentioned, guys. Well, that it needs to happen now because all of a sudden it'll confuse the Richmond midfields. I know Revolt's on fire. Now it needs someone else to step up, like a Griffiths or another half forward, because I think that's smart from John Walsfold to put Waters back there. Well, he is their captain today. As Lecrae heads in board, Embley. Horrible kick. Jackson, little fumbly, back right. after a three-game suspension. Daniel Jackson might be a little rusty. And we just saw there why West Coast are ranked 15th for kicking efficiency in the midfield. Yeah. Kennedy wide to Embley. Pokes that and 
pokes it terribly. McGuire. Galidio. Edwards. Mitch Farmer started on the bench. Made it tough for Tamley. Had to give it back. Farmer to mop up his own mess here. They First of the ball, the handle out nicely, and they get it across the boundary line, which is a win. Tamlin coming off. Because you played in the midfield, you saw that loose ball there. There was three efforts, and West, uh, sorry, Richmond were first to the ball every time. Yeah, they've got their, and they're a very good clearance team. We know that. This sort of stuff is where they've been good. And again, they're going to probably get the clearance here by the looks of it. Emily tried to break free with a coach, and likewise, it's rake free towards Cousins. He tried to keep his feet. Jackson kind of over it and kind of not. Dustin Martin locks it in there. And Cousins yes. could tackle that. Slipped Too a bit high. high. Slipped a bit. Wasn't I think it, Vickery it, might have got him high. Yeah, it wasn't the, the Cousins tackle. It was the Vickery tackle. It just slipped over the shoulder there, Dwayne. Rosa inside 50 and the fist again from Guam. Jackson, Martin. Very good at clean they are, these boys. Like Martin, Cochin. They're happy to take a tackle. Yeah, did you see that? He, he ducked his head into that and said, I'm going to wear one. Yeah. That, that is really good play. You see that? See him duck his head under that knew his arm to wear the free kick? You've got to be tough to do that by yeah. the way as well. Well, the very good midfielders are prepared to take a bruise to, to release the footy. And that's that's what he's been able to do. And Martin's been doing that only in his first year. Cochin, McGuan, Connors. Now, King, a push on Hearn. I'll tell you what, Hearn went back with real purpose on that occasion and won that free kick just purely because he went back and pushed back hard. Stevenson. That's a good switch of play. But the issue is now they've got a loose man, so it means that Richmond will have an extra down this end. Shepard missed the target. Moore attacks that beautifully. Put the handball over the top. Oh. Martin. Good step. A little slip step. Slipped everybody over and went on himself. Oh, don't try and take him on. Watch him. Gone. <laughs> Prittis on the rebound. He's got the options. Rolling ball. Lacroix should hit a target inside oh, 50. That's the difference. Kennedy oh, well gets past and never misses. West Coast get there first. Well, I want to have another look at this one, whether the Richmond player chose to try and bump and Kennedy chose to take his body through the ball. Man, that's, this is a great bit of play. You don't take the big fella on. It's like taking on Cyril Rioli. That's silly. Uh, as strong as you may be, but it's this next bit of play here. The kick wasn't a great one for the Frenchman. Went over his head. And this one here, yeah. Just trying to pick up who that was. Is that McGuan? Mm. Yeah, McGuan had to make a decision there. And his decision should have been that he needed it to make sure uh, that he was going to at least take the body of Kennedy. And he tried to just bump it. I'm not sure what he was trying to do. No, it's cost him a goal. He should have tackled. It's yeah. as simple as that. You were right the first time, Pickers. He chose to bump, and if you don't make contact, it's yeah. open up the gate. Koch and a torpedo inside 50, and well read, but not marked by McKenzie. Trouble here again. Little knock on to Rewalt. Tried to slide a handball out. Collins backtracks, but backtracks into trouble. Embley, nice little one-two. And the boundary line was what he was after, and he missed it. Delidio thumped this back. Good attack there, brilliant attack, but no mark to Nason. Good play, Edwards. Gets it up. Goal attack. Oh, from right. Just inside 50, and Dustin Martin slams home another one. He's an unbelievable player, Dustin Martin. He's leading the disposals from Richmond with seven. And you can see why he was the number three pick of the national draft last year. Good kick forward. Good effort there, and you just see the, the ability for Edwards, a second effort, and Martin off two steps, just slotted straight over the goal and Pye's hat. That is a terrific goal from the midfield, and that's the next step in their development. They're winning the ball, now they're running forward, kicking goals. Talk about being efficient. The Tigers have been inside 58 times for five goals once, so six scores. This young fella's had now seven touches, Kicked a goal. Been very, very clean around the stoppages. Nat Nui goes up in the ruck against Graham. Clearance to Ebert. Inside 50 to Lydia. Outreach Nikoski. Outread Nikoski. Kick was a little ugly. He's a shepherd. And White gets one. Handball in board. Cochin. Back to White. 
This to go just... backwards, to go forward. Moore needs to get back quickly. Does oh. try pipe, but it's the dangerous territory. Although we had Connors. Been watching the World Cup soccer, I think. Um, well, that's half a trip. Yep. And they are occasionally reportable. Those trips, Dalziel might get away with that one. One other entry, you can see Nikoski on Delidio. They start with Waters, which is a good matchup, but now they've had to put Waters back behind the ball, so that's a good win there for Richmond. Farmer inside to Edwards. I'd go long to Rewald here. Rewald's in a one on one, about to go. Skyfield oh. with him. <laughs> Rewald, too good. This is unbelievable stuff. Another contested mark. But again, where'd the ball go? Where's the I'm support? sounding like a broken record, but you've just got to put someone in front of Jack Rebolt because he's absolutely on fire. There's no Darren Glass, but look at the space he's got to work into. The ball's only going to one player. Strong mark, that's it's, it's an outstanding contested mark, but I'll be just flipping the ruck and back at the yeah. center bounce. So, mate, 10 yards in front of Rebolt. This is for number five. <laughs> five goals in 19 minutes. Uh, brilliant play. Tigers just dominating the West Coast Eagles here in all the major areas. Their efficiency has the... But look how much space Edwards has got in the centre corridor. And he basically just said, well, go to that side. I'm going to kick it well weighted to your side, to your advantage. And McKenzie, there's time for a move there anyway. I mean, there's, they're getting nothing out of the big blokes. They're getting nothing out of uh, the big Ruckman being Cox at three touches. And they get nothing out of Nat Nui. They might as well put one of them behind the ball. 9 times inside their forward, 50 for 6 goals, 1, 66%. Every so, they're going in there for a goal, which is unbelievable. The league average is 31, by the way. You see Schofield there. You know, he's going to need some support as well, now on Rewalt. Well, unfortunately the West Coast just don't travel these days. <laughs> well, they did win here earlier They did. Year. They did. They only beat Melbourne, I must say. Who were poor on the day. Yeah. Who we also must say, but... Gee, I'm not liking what I'm seeing so far in this game. A lot of game time left, but that could be uh, a bad sign for the West Coast, rather than a good sign in some ways, given that uh, if Richmond win this game, and there's a lot of game to be played, oh, they'll yeah. be one game away from the West Coast on the ladder, and the way they're going at the moment, there's a huge percentage gap between them, but that could be bridged a little as well. Cox, inside 50, Kennedy, good fist at McGuan, knocks it down to Koski, no prior opportunity there, that won't be ball. Thirty-seven to six, a thirty-one point lead. We've ticked into time on opening term, and quarter time probably can't come quickly enough for the West Coast. Connors to his own advantage, back after an eight-week break. He has been in good form in the VFL though. Dustin Martin, who simply is in good form. <laughs> in fact, he might be the leader at the end of the voting for the NAB Rising Star ahead of. Nat Nui, the way his yes. season is transpiring, it's takes them on on cue, Martin. Kick maybe not so good. Waters attacks it, dragged down. He's nearly downfield. Getting back with the flight, Graham. And everybody on the Tigers' side in spite at the moment. McGinnity, and out of the, of the ins for the West Coast. Lacroix, kickable by his standards. Yeah. It's the post. Martin Lacroix. It was against Richmond here. But he arrived as a player, around 22... 2006, kicked five in his third game as Dustin Martin shows us what he's got. There's four Eagles players he went through there, Dustin Martin. We only saw two on the screen, but there's another two to his right. He's had ten touches oh, already. Well Good mark. Is he within range? Well, I think he is, Dwayne. <laughs> oh, oh, no, hang on, sorry. He's marked at 70. <laughs> that means he's got a few 85. Unless he's Malcolm Blight at, yeah. at Optus Oval and not in 76. I reckon this will be his best kick. Oh, he needs now. So he loads up from 60. Goal square, no fist from Vickery, and stab around the body from Brown, and it doesn't cover the required distance. I did say for those people at home, Dustin Martin might lead the voting. He can be voted to win the NAB Rising Star, but he can't actually win it. Sorry, Dwayne, but Rising Star. just talking about the uh, the team play there of Mitch Brown. I know you're down on the scoreboard, but play the percentage. You had two West Coast Eagles players working to the coalface, and he's elected a... Ebert gets the snap. And bounce on time from behind. Dean Cox, uh, the last couple of the last centre bounce, and then that little clearance there inside the forward 50. Some good work, some good ruck work by the big fella, experienced Dean Cox. 
We talked pre-game. Look at this. This is just a beautiful bit of work. It's laid it down for this. Newman wide. Player. Shepard almost the mark. Takes it out. Watch your footy. Stay Putting pressure on the Eagles. Don't Richmond hold. at the moment. 66% efficiency. Disposal efficiency. Oh. Cox a little flick. And he's starting to get... Have an impact here. Oh, that's a terrible. Curtis, handball backwards. Rebot doing it all on the wing. Gives to Cousins. Hands it off. Nathan's away. Uh, no rewalk to kick to, of course, because he's gave it to him and Waters is on his own. Got a couple of options. Dalziel will probably collect this at half back and take off. He's got Cox long. Should be the option. He goes short and even takes the mark. Cox is still out there wide. Had the height advantage on Delidio. Kennedy. A little nudge from McGon. That's a win for Richmond. He's marking the ball around the wing area. A poke wide to Nikoski. We can't go long. There's two extra players long for Richmond. But he kicks long in hope. Brown's down there and oh. Riser over the top. Couldn't take the mark. Shimmy from Kennedy. Lacroix gets it back in Kennedy's direction. Dalziel caught a little high. He gives his handball from Chris. Lewis Stevenson. Oh, sorry, wrong handball. No, no, it's a rich one, sorry. <laughs> Cox takes it out of the air, kicks Smothered. Trying to win a free. Cotch him with the tackle, Tuck dives in. We've got another ball up. So he's starting to see a bit of an impact here from the big fella, Dean Cox. Just this sort of situation. Kennedy does some ruck work. Lacroix missed it. Prudis didn't. Gives to Rosa. I did well. He did. He slipped everybody, went on to the left and then missed. Dwayne, we, we talked about that win that the Eagles had against Melbourne. And Rosa was a really important play. His ball use inside 50 was a really windy day for memory. And his ball uh, use throughout most of the afternoon was very good. But as a local boy in some respects, Warwick Nabil and North Ballarat, Matt Rosa would be used to playing in mid-winter conditions in Melbourne. Oh, I'll tell you what, Mason. Warwick Nabil, beautiful ground. Is it? Okay. It is a beautiful ground. <laughs> better than the Telt to the uh, Head Stadium. Yeah, oh, well, much better. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. It's not right, the collar. Sorry. <laughs> and again, Bo Wilkes is taking a beautiful mark here in the wing and have turned the ball over. That's just an easy possession, I think. That's the area for the Eagles, just their ball use. It must be so frustrating. They have held their ground a little bit here they in the have. last five or six minutes, though. Yeah, and the crowd's getting a little disappointed. Rewald hasn't kicked one for <laughs> seven or eight minutes now. The ball hasn't been down there, Dwight. I know, but still. Cox to Prittis. Back about? again, little <laughs> stat <laughs> fest. <laughs> what was all that about? He's racking them up and in the hole, Delidio. Well, they've got the extra Delidio. Oh, White's away here. He can take the bounce. He's got Farmer running for him. He's got a couple of options. Griffiths, good hands there and held a little long. Handball up. Martin. He's very well again. And can he get the fly? Oh, you bet he can. Couldn't bring it down though. Crowd got what they wanted though, some more Rewald action. If you've joined us late, uh, Jack Rewald has five. <laughs> Kennedy wide. Lacroix gathers, turns, Gee, uses wow. the boundary. Put more inside out. Oh, and oh super a goal. Ripper. That was brilliant. Mark Lacroix keeps the West Coast in it. You talked about it because the last five minutes they've controlled the play. Now they've got a reward for effort. Just sheer brilliance from Lacroix there. Not a lot more can do because he corralled into the boundary line beautifully. Just that leg speed there and to nail the ball over the hat. That's a goal on Bryce's hat. That's a very good goal. Super goal, actually. That is absolutely brilliant from McCrack. Desperately need him to kick a bag now with Revolt up the other end with five. He was wearing the number 19 way back in 2006 when he kicked that five goal haul here against Richmond. Mark McCrack, and he just missed out on all Australian selection last year. It was outstanding. Vickery down, Prittis. Cox, handball missed Shepard, but he went back in and earned it back. Rosa, not 15, called to play on. Seven. 
Nice little, nice little period here, the West Coast. Well, the Cox and Predators pickers have had six clearances between them the last ten minutes. Yeah. Lacra and Moore took an arm. Lacra right. will kick from 55. Dan Cox is in a big few minutes here. Thinking about whether to pass or go for it. Trying to get a shepherd of the man on the mark. He's... And that's a chaos ball. Ebert got hands to it, couldn't mark it. The Ledio, tambling. Didn't work for the West Coast. Cousins slips the kick wide. 238 games for the West Coast. And firing against them. Farmer short. Big fist. Ball back alive in the middle. McGinnity attacked it nicely. Jackson misread it. Prittis to Rosa. It's kick smothered from 60. They are on fire and inspired at the moment, the Tigers. Vickery gets it from Martin. Sends it to half forward. Collins. Rewalt's in a run on one with Schofield. Rewalt's on the move. Rewalt. Two grabs. Not the third. Tried a little back heel. Schofield was there. McGinnity just hacks it out of the area with a handball to the boundary. King. Ridden a little. Handball up. Collins. Martin. He's having a big first term at the office. Yeah, but that's his 12th possession. And a push on Embley. And Back he's had a big possession start as well. Make it uh, 13 for Dustin Martin. Yeah. Cox. It was a good hit up there before on Collins, because that's Bo Waters' direct opponent. So Richmond had to lower their eyes and make sure they hit Waters up, because he's the man for the third man in the rewalk. Vickery, McGuan, Edwards. Not sure what he was doing there, but his handball to Tamlin was terrible. Wilkes caught in that good Tamlin tackle. McKenzie gets it from Cox. Embley, another possession. Waters. Schofield. Ebert overran it. Trouble. Martin, another possession coming up here. Used his strength to shrug. Collins to Rebolt. Can he get it and snap? He gets it. He elects not to snap. Handball's back towards King. Plays for the freedom <laughs> runner. It was high. He made sure the umpire saw it in the end. He did a pirouette. Good running there by uh, Luke McGuire. Inside 50, Griffiths couldn't take the mark. Topok away from him. Embley to Hearn. He can't collect it. Nat Nui caught a little high there. No free plant advantage, perhaps. Brown. He's got one on ones up the ground. He's got eight seconds, though. Mikoski and the crowd. Needs to hurry for a mark on 50. And there won't be enough time now. Quarter time here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, and the crowd is stunned. The West Coast Eagles fans, yeah, they're stunned, but Richmond fans, they came in as favourites. They're on track to win, and Jack Rewald has five. 6 one to 2 3 Rewald, under this, can't get a fly at it, back of the pack. This could be the perfect start. Strolls in, kicks the goal, and Richmond are away. Daniel Connors back into the lineup, kicks inside 50. He's got it again. He's That's not the Danny Minogue of the Rewald family anymore. Inside 50, and here he is again. He's yeah. on the move. He's got this. He's up. <laughs> Rewald's in a one on one. About to go. Skyfield with him. Rewald, too good. This is for number five. <laughs> five goals in 19 minutes. Five goals in 19 minutes to start the game for Jack Rewald. Richmond at six goals, 1.37 a quarter time. The West Coast, 2.3.15. But, Liam, as you did say, the West Coast almost won the last seven minutes of that quarter. Oh, they did. I think there's some real positives they could take out of it. If you're looking at the key stats, they've had more inside 50s than Richmond. Uh, scores to inside 50, Spud, you want to talk about that. But I want to talk about the effectiveness of this disposal. 67% the West Coast. An area they've got to tidy up a bit. Take Rewald out of it, they're probably leading a quarter time. Well, they would be, obviously, because he's kicked five goals, but he's been the difference in that first quarter. Well, he's been the difference, there's no doubting that. The, the issue is going to be, has the damage been done? Is it uh, insurmountable? But you're right, the last 10 minutes, West Coast dominated through yep. Cox and Prittis. They started with some quality ball. Dustin Martin, obviously the danger man. We see John Walsh fold there. I wonder what plan he's going to be devising there. I think Bo Waters going back, just hoping they're going to double-team Rewald in the air, but... When they go forward, Kennedy and McCraw try and keep them deep if they can. Mass 
massive double header day of football for those in Western Australia today, the West Coast Eagles and Richmond here, where it's quarter time and Richmond by 22 points, of course, later today. Third and fourth on the AFL ladder, St Kilda and Fremantle. Jack Rewalt, the star of the show, five goals in the opening 19 minutes of this game to set up this 22 point lead at quarter time and he heads to the Richmond end. Yes, he's uh, now leading the Coleman medal, Dwayne. Yes, an outstanding start. 40 goals so far this season for Jack Reebok, Brendan Favola and Matthew Pavage on 39, but both playing later today. It'll be interesting, though. I saw Damon Harwick, so he give the Reebok one-on-one, but he'll be trying to get double teamed. So it's important that Richmond try and use some other avenues to go on out. Collins, Dustin Martin's actually gone down as a forward as well. So yeah, Asprey on Josh Kennedy. And Bowater is still playing that loose man defence. So what's happening is Tamlin's trying to make it a two-on-one there just so he doesn't roll back and get in front of the leading Rewalt. Perfect bounce to start this second term. Scott Selwood over it, tunnels it through his legs. Prittis to Hearn, stripped by King, caught by Nat Nui and Hearn. Not necessarily trying to get it out. That could be costly. It is. You can see Bo Waters there. So there's a loose play. It'll end up becoming Galidio. Stevenson. Well, I think Galidio, uh, sorry, he's, he's free for Richmond. Yeah, play, which is a little bit of a concern because he's, he's leading up. their effective disposals and rebounds. Hearn thumps it along. Big leap. Kinley couldn't bring it down. Had a couple of hands on it. Galidio's handball. Mrs. Asprey will get a ball in. Well handled by the umpire in the middle there with Jake King annoying everybody and Scott Silver getting a little frustrated. Well, Deledio, you're right, Spud. He's the last person that they should be allowing to play loose man for Richmond. Well, he is because he wants to dispose of effective kicks, handball receives, and more importantly, rebound. So not only does he get it, but he uses it better than most. Well, you see him with McKinley. Well, that's good. I would just let him, let someone else go free for Richmond. You see Cox is in the goal square there, so Nat Nui to do the ruck. Tuck ducked into that tackle and then threw it out. Ebert, back, Rosa, smothered Edwards. And the sidestep, beautiful. Back into the corridor. They're taking this game on. Rebolt up to the wing. No arm slap free. Play on. Handball out was okay from it's King. Slippery though. in there. It is slippery in there. Newman hacks it to half forward. Bouncing ball. Stevenson gets back. Waters, the loose man, Danny Frawley. And Liam Pickering were telling you about to Wilkes. Takes off at half back. Prittis. Jackson with him. Nice fist from Jackson. And collects back from that three game headbutting suspension. And some poise back. Sends it long. Collins with the fly. Got it. But certainly they've got other targets now because no oh, one is the loose man behind. And then Collins kicked two goals last week. So this will be a real worry for the West Coast players and their staff because, OK, they may have got Revolt under control somewhat, but Collins being another target now. So need to share the load, the Richmond forwards. Damien Harwick might have changed this up, pushed Revolt up the ground and changed the target. But Collins not kicking as well as Revolt are behind. Got to steer that one through. It was a very good bit of play by Jackson on the wing. The one-on-one -on -one against Prittis. Once he went to ground, Prittis was out of business. He has had a good start to the game, Prittis. He's had 10 touches. And Shane Edwards, he's done a couple of clever things. He's sidestepping West Coast opponents. Hearn, another 70 metre bomb. Nat Nui, three to beat. Deledio crumbs it. Back inside, 50. And Waters backing back with the flight again. He's taken a few marks doing exactly that already today. Filling the hole nicely. We settled their team, Dwayne, by putting him back there because, as you said, he'll take the courageous mark. And he's their acting captain today, so that's what you want from your leaders. Wilkes, Ebert, back to Waters, Rosa. Now, they've got an extra player here, the Eagles. It's good play by McKinley. Okay, so McKinley from 50. Cox is on the goal score on his own. Well, he had to be aware of that. He knew it was two on three. As soon as he marked the ball, just get the ball to space because it was a two on one situation deep. Yeah, you've got to wheel around. They have played a lot better in the last part of that first quarter and they've started this quarter okay the Eagles so the West Coast fans at home don't be too distressed at this stage as I think you're uh, starting to build something here 11 goals 11 for the season not bad off the boot and hasn't got the carry touched on the line well he had to kick that for mine he had to know that 
Kennedy and Cox were down there on a two-on-one. So that, that's a real lot off for the Tigers. I know the West Coast coaching staff would have been looking at that. We worked the ball be beautifully through here. We've got the extra. Newman. Graham flies. Fisted away by Wilkes. Rosa. Had to slide it back to Wilkes. Stevenson handball. Untidy. Edwards. He set it up to Tamlin. Dragged down. That's a good tackle. Had prior opportunity as well. Got him. the Tigers up. Gonna have to run it all the way though. That's Collins, long. Martin, clever, Mason. That's a free. That was unbelievable play from Martin. He knew that Mason was running forward there, and that spike through the free kick. Clever play. Rewalt's got two on him. Jackson loads up from outside 50. He misses. Let's have a look at the Martin tap on there. Clever play. Great game sense. He never taken the ball. He known he would have got tackled. Ebert back to Schofield. They move the ball quickly. They've got numbers on the wing, the Eagles. Stevenson. Rosa. And he's getting a lot of it as well. Possession number 10 for him. Yeah, Comes right in Lord Embley. Short. McCraw. He's got to roll and out. go. Yep. And McKinley again. He's in a one-on-one -on -one with Newman. He's got the reach. He can't mark it. Newman did brilliantly. McKinley's over it now and in trouble. He dragged it in. He's dead. Well, well called, Dwayne. Look, he tried to use the body there, but then just go at the ball. He was more looking for the body than stretching the arms and allowing Newman, because Newman knew he was under pressure. The kick was a terrific kick to advantage. Yeah, once you go to the ground like that, you're in strife too. To Lidio, dangerously. No mark. And Connors... Gets them out of it. Delidio again. Coming off a 20 position game last week, Brett Delidio. His last position game of the year. So he wants to do better today. Lacra pokes it inside 50. McKinley again, thumped away. Graham caught by Hearn, got it up to Moore. Back to Newman. King back into congestion. That allowed Newman to run into the space. Tamlin to set it up. Scoots his way around Matt Nui. Kick a wobbler, tough one. Dangerous. Cochin knocked away from him. Well played, Tamlin. Tried to mop up his own mess. Delidio. Oh, he's laid off his. Sold everybody the dummy. Cochin, Delidio, Tark. Where's Rewalt? Short option instead inside 50. And taking the mark is Andrew Collins again. Oh, that's magnificent play. He was double team Rewalt. This is clever from the Richmond midfield. They know that Revolt is the danger man, so they're lowering their eyes and, more importantly, widening their vision. So Shane Tuck, we just assumed, instead of marking contest here with McKinley, just had to go at the ball one-handed, just allowed Chris Newman into the play. But this is terrific play here for Richmond, working through a different key forward. Should kick this. He's already had a sider from exactly this spot and doesn't make the same mistake twice. And clever players shouldn't. Two-goal turnaround. Uh, there was a beautiful kick there to McKinley. He didn't play on earlier in the game, and he tried to take the ball one-handed. I love the build-up here, and I just assumed that everyone else in the ground did the thought, well, Rewalt's going to take a hang here. See Delito to Tuck. You see Tuck yeah. look out the corner of his eye to Collins, and that is beautiful there. West Coast Skiers were all trying to hone in on Rewalt, and that is good play, sharing the load. So explain to me again, Danny, why it happens when you kick a goal, you come off if you can. <laughs> it's called rotation in the oh. modern game, Dwayne. Okay, yeah, but what, I, why when you kick a goal? Yeah, yeah. I get front. Well, he's probably coming off before he kicks it. Right. And uh, about a, a minute later, he marks the ball before he gets off. Something that's not worth kicking goals in. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't it's not a great ball. I didn't take rewind off, which is good news. Tuck attacks this nicely. Tambling. Play the advantage. No, no, it's a throw, Dwayne. Okay, footy tapped it. Well, it might have been the footy guys. Because I, I, I reckon I you'll find uh, Shane Tate might have thrown one a bit earlier. Let's oh, have a look at this one. No, that one's fine. <laughs> <laughs> they got the wrong one. He's like, well, what's going on here? He did. Come on, mate. So it's all square, umpire Shane Stewart. <laughs> yeah. He missed the earlier one. Yeah, certainly that was a handball. Well, he guessed. That's what he did, the umpire. And uh, there was one umpire dropped for guessing with Simon Black last week. With a handball. It was called a throw that was a handball. Daniel Jackson, Delidio, 
Little fumble, but Embley slipped. It is a little wet in there. It's slippery down there. Tamling, Jackson. Gotta come out of there. A wobbler, Nason, McKenzie. Didn't have it. Nason didn't have him. McKenzie's got it, and Nason grabs his foot. Prittis. Ebert. Inboard Jones. Stevenson. Ebert. Maintaining possession to half forward. Farmer got there first on Lacroix. To Graham inboard. Delidio. Back to Graham and then to Shepard. Jackson. Clutching. They are taking this game on as if they're Geelong on top of the ladder at the moment. Heads wide with the kick. Tough bouncing ball to gather. McGinnity and White Man handled him. It's not a look. Oh, we've got to look at uh, Patrick McGinnity there. It's just spectator. The ball was meant for him, so he just had to go. It's really and simply. He was looking around, but he was the target. McGon to Edwards, and they're away. She's been good. Edwards off the rebound has been providing an empty forward line with Rewalt one out here if they can get it in. Griffiths looks up, says, lead that way, and I'll kick it to you. Rewalt in a one on one. Schofield with the fist. Rewalt about to crumb it. Schofield, Rewalt. White almost gets in his way, ball in. He's had three or four genuine opportunities to mark since the first quarter, since his fifth goal, and he, he's got his hands to them, but he just hasn't been able to hold on. Schofield's been okay. At least he's forcing him wide when he's... Uh, so he's working him over with the body before the ball's kicked in. That was a kick for Revolt, and that's a free to water. It's a sloppy by Matt White. No, it was, because he knew he was under extreme pressure, or he went to ground. So they've allowed play on to advantage. Shepard inboard. Tough ball. McKinley the slap on. And attack well by King. Little one two with McGuire. Inboard to Tambling, who's got a panic. Stevenson comes at him. Tambling thinks about another bounce. Takes him on and runs away from him. Good chase. Hamble's inboard. Martin. Cousins. Martin slips his way around Kennedy, pokes the pass towards Rewald. Well done, Hearn man. got in the spot. Now it was good pressure in the air. It was forced to turn out. Now can they make them pay going the other way? Nikoski to Brown. He's got Lacroix. It's the only option inside 50, and that's the worst possible kick to try and give him. And Lacroix lets him know. And pardon his French. We had a little bit more time <laughs> than he thought there. <laughs> I think he said a word or two there and deserved to give a word or two. Yeah, that wasn't a great kick by Mitch Brown. But uh, the build-up was OK by West Coast. Victory down. Prentice the steal. And oh, a God. brilliant goal. That's a lot off. Great super. Pickers. Not sure where the clearance direct the opponent from Prentice was here, Lane, but the so positioning. Let's have a look at Jackson's there. The tap down. He just sharked it. That was just good play. Just good play. An arm there from... Cal Moore and a good goal from a player that's been really working hard. Matt Prittis. Yeah, I think Cal Moore had to play as a sweeper might. Good play from Jackson, but Cal Moore had to stay back and protect the area. Matt Prittis, the leading player at the West Coast this year, according to many of the numbers and according to the bookmakers, the leader in the pursuit of their best and fairest. His kicking efficiency up from the 57% it was last year as well. Having a good year. Cox flicks it down in the Prittis direction. But Vickery gathers. Goes back to go forward. Newman. Set it up from half back. Gone. Good pressure. Must have been a legal handball. Jackson. Vickery. Asbury. Farmer. Rewa wants it long. It's in his direction. Schofield again with him. Schofield slips and Rewa gathers. Yeah, you can be frustrated. You go to ground under pressure. It was a beautiful kick. He's absolutely on fire. Jack Revolt, we saw all the Richard supporters. They've got a new hero. <laughs> number eight on the back as well. And that's the number that many a Richmond fan will have on their back after this performance today. This is for number six. He's kicked six three times in his career. And can't make it four times. He's worked on his kicking technique, though, because he seems to have a really nice action now. Yeah, well, that was a, it was a very good kickoff for Burt. Five contested marks. Well, yeah, that's, you go through a game where you have teams that battle to get five for a match. Well, especially with the way the game's played now. 
as you said, teams five from that. So he's had five in a quarter and a half. Hearn told to get on with it. Richmond have the numbers here. Tuck punches down to where West Coast had the numbers in the front. Brown got it from Selwood, gave to Wembley. Dalziel, short. Yeah, they should kick a goal here if they work it through correctly. Kennedy, McGinnity, Lacroix. Lukoski's on his own the square. And ignores him and goes to McKinley, who, as we told you earlier, is a 50-50 goal kicker this year. They're working into the game, just the word composure. We saw Mitch Brown a couple of minutes ago, and they're rolling the dice a little bit, but they're getting forward of the ball. So the forwards have to know when they've got him out number, just go back quickly, and that was good from Lacroix. If you had a blazed away long to the cost, yeah, he was manned up by that Well, stage. that's right. The, the long, by the time the ball got there, they would have had support. Kicked one earlier that dropped short, and this one misses by about the same margin, a foot. Carbon copy of Rewalt's short goal. Yeah. Inside of the post. We need to start kicking those. Desperate dive by McGuan. Good mark. Back to Moore. Still a bit of an arm wrestle at the moment, though. West Coast have looked dangerous. They've been able to get the ball inside 50 a bit quicker. They could very well have another couple of goals. Yeah, if they could start and take the first 19 minutes back where Rewalt <laughs> kicked the five goals, they'd almost fancy their chances of winning this one. They're still in it. Plenty of time left. Oh, absolutely. They're still in it all right. McGuan, turnover, Cox. Good attack, Collins. Made that a contest. Jackson, Dalziel with yeah, the tackle. decision. He tried to free the arms first, then the foot. Nick Nat knew he was at centre four on his own, but he's just getting to the wrong spots at the moment, big Nick. Dalziel, wide, and a good fist in it. Nick Nat Nui hasn't had a huge day yet, just the one handball, no kicks. Well, that, that'll be the development in his game. We know how exciting he's going to be. He's probably got the most exciting highlights reel of any player playing the game, but uh, unfortunately, uh, he hasn't tended to get a lot of the footy at this early stage of his career. Moore, Cochin, Collins and King combined to get it out on the full. Jack King just bit off with more than he could chew. The Bulldog. <laughs> we called him a pest, a Bulldog. Well, I'd say pest in an affectionate in a nice, way. In a nice yeah, way. Yeah, that's right. If you can use it affectionately. He's a nice pest. Yes. Victory yeah. kept that alive. Everybody stopped. Rebo. Two to beat here. Oh, and wins. There's six contested marks on MB. And again, I, that high ball, you've got to ask the question of the halfback flankers, do they really want to go? Because it does take a lot of courage when you're coming off your half form and the ball goes over your head. But there's, there's four points up for grabs. And there's pride up for grabs in this game of football. I'm just not sure when many of the halfback flankers of the Eagles really want to be there. He under that ball. Blossoming before our eyes, Jack Revolt for number six. And that's a dart straight over the umpire. Well, he is a very, very talented player. He's at 21 years old. He's playing against a Norm Smith medalist there at a marking contest, and he's just too good. The amount of times I've seen Revolt the last couple of weeks, he's his player under the ball and all Emily had to do was stand back and spike the ball put his knee or his body into the back of Revolt and spoil it half the contest too many times they're trying to mark it on him and there's a young player that's only ever played AFL footy with the hands in the back row. yep and there's many players that played so long before that came in it was hard to change he's never had to change no he hasn't but he also back I suppose in the days of the Danny Frawley fullbacks when they used to give you an ear massage every time you took a mark they used to square it out a bit you were very good yeah, at just getting there late with a big fist of the ear but you just try and hard it <laughs> I don't think you try and go into a game now and revolt to win a contest no, you're right. your mindset's got to be the hard it normally it is with the body or with the, or with the spoil gee that was almost in the back there but the hometown roar got Richmond the free they won't be allowed to play under advantage so in the end it works for the west coast it's held up it'll come back to King yeah, look, it did look like it was in the back, but it was, again, great desperation from Jake King. Cochin. Everybody wants him to go to Rewalt. Rewalt's moving. Goes. And almost turned backing back. Gave a free away. And Farmer takes it out. Talk about attracting a crowd then, Jack Rewalt. He had 
Embley is the loose man. Hearn backing back as well as his direct opponent. Look at this. You can see there, there's Embley. There's McKenzie. There's Hearn. Should be able to free up another couple of Richmond players. Vickery to Nason. Has he marked it? He held it. It didn't hit the turf according to the umpire. Uh, the West Coast Eagles fans have said don't despair a little bit before. Uh, starting to get a little bit worried at the moment. Gee whiz, they're not winning any of the 50-50 stuff at the moment. The last few minutes has been all Tigers again. Right. Good decision. He controlled it. It did hit the turf, but he had control of it when it hit the ground. Well, his arms were still underneath it, right? Ben Nason, on the top of the square, for a 35-point lead. He's been a very good player, young Nason. Yes, he does. A few people do, do say that he looks a little bit like Princess Leia with that haircut. <laughs> but You could have said John Platten and been a bit kinder. Well, that's what they say. I'm not saying it. But uh, I'll tell you what he has. He's got an enormous aerobic capacity. He runs hard. And look at that. He's fought the front spot. That's a mark every day of the week. And he's a very, uh, very good young player. Well, the old stats, I don't want to bring him up, but there's only one team that's come back from 30 points down this year, so a 5% chance, and that was the Brisbane Lions against the Western Bulldogs. Yeah, so that, I, that stat is a little strange in that a couple of teams have come back, they just haven't won. They've hit the lead with five minutes in games to go and then conceded the lead again. Yeah, they've still got both. Cochin, Edwards, yeah, but they've come back, that's the point. Wide ball, Vickery lurking. Yep. So there's plenty of time to come back in this one for the West Coast. I know, I can see where you're coming from, Dwayne, but the, the facts are they still got beat, so there's only been one team in Brisbane, but I like your, your mindset. Just where, what, that, optimistic about No, the no, Coast I am too, because I'm looking at West Coast and how can they Don't get back change the your game. mind now. <laughs> you reckon they're dead? They just say it, that's fine. I'm just saying <laughs> there's a 5% chance, chance yeah, Dwayne Pike. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you said, no, that's Come on, you bucks, get on with it. Hands it over the top. <laughs> Kinley, centering ball. Scott Selwood looks inboard. Rosa That's from 45. Up. Tough That's one to mark. Yeah. Unless you have won. Yeah, it is. Good luck getting under that. Well, Dalziel is running into space. The ball just didn't get there, unfortunately. Newman to King. And White in the third grade just before he travelled out. I tell you, he's been a very effective player for the Tigers, Shane Edwards. Mm. Running carry from half back, and his ball use. Well, Delidio is getting some quality ball too now. Newman. Heads wide. Cousins. Can't mark that Nui. We're in the old King, Ben Cousins, number nine. And he is the new King. They need him to get involved, Nick Nat Nui. Jones. Handball's back. Stevenson. And Nason running down. He did get a toe on that ball. Turnover though, Cousins slips it out. King, Wobbler to Nason, he can get and go. 60 from goal, Rewalt's calling for it back to the square. Can't get a hand on it, Cox. Oh, well done, Ben Cox, working back. Angus Graham is also trying to get back there as well. Wilkes. I think the kick was intended to, for Angus Graham. Just didn't get enough purchase on it. Farmer with the spoil, knocks it down and keeps it alive. King, it's having yeah. an outstanding day. Yeah. Uh, Rewalt's free on his own here. Deledio, oh, he stubbed his toe. Tamley, yeah. Deledio, yeah, kick. to the square, getting back, Vickery! Well, Deledio is now the danger man. We talked about a pre-game, and I know he stubbed the, the kick there 10 seconds ago, but he's now had 15 disposals. Vickery pushing forward, that's good from the big men getting down to see Graham and Cox and Vickery pushing through there. It's a good play by Graham there, just take, took Cox completely out of it. Matt Nui's direct opponent, Tyron Vickery, spectating the ball there, Matt Nui. Still only had the one hand ball, Big Nick. Back into the team this week, Tyrone Vickery. I'm not sure on the stats of how many teams have come from 41 points down. But that's the task the West Coast have now. Pretty play, more options. Jack Rewalt's kicked the one goal this quarter, but they're sharing the workload now. Martin, Collins, now Vickery pushing forward. See, Deledio stubbed the first one. He's a champion player like him is not going to make the same mistake twice in a row. Get the ball to a dangerous spot, put any 
defence under pressure. Vickery pushing forward. Cannot see Nick Natanui anywhere in the screen. That's his direct opponent. Where's Nick Natanui? He's a sheer talent. He's only had the one disposal. His direct opponent, Tyrone Vickery, pushing forward there. He had to go and make a contest. Well, the two of them played together for Australia in a junior team, junior tour to South Africa. Vickery and Nat Nui. And Vickery would rate his chances of beating him because they played so much football together as kids. Edwards, that Again. tackle in the back. Edwards Free is... kick, Curtis. Short kick and Asprey. Attack on Brown, not deemed to have marked it. Asprey throws that out. Edwards thrown out of it as well. Curtis gets it out to Brown. Rosa to half forward. Newman knew the traffic was coming. Gave back to Edwards. He's crunched. Well, I thought there was a free kick or a mark to the West Coast Eagles play. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure how that was a free yeah, kick. He uh, killed him. <laughs> Edwards. His father has the big task of trying to resurrect the Port Adelaide Magpies in the SANFL. Their chief administrator. Good football family. And he's playing some good football today. Pitch Edwards. Opportunity here. For the fancy Thomas. stuff. Absolutely. It's been worth the wait for eight weeks. Bounces it inside 50. McKenzie didn't really try to get rid of that with any vigour. But he didn't have prior opportunity. Ball comes out. Collins. King. It'll be right for him to roll one home. But he can't. Yeah. West Coast Eagles player. I think it's Bo Waters. He's in a lot of trouble down there in the hands of the train. He's about 40 metres out from Richmond's goal. He hasn't moved. And he's tough. He's as tough as they can't. I'm pretty sure it's Waters. Yeah, it is Bo Waters, and uh, they can't afford to lose him. He yeah. is he virtually moved. their best player at the moment. 33 oh. possessions last week against Geelong. He's been in outstanding form. Delidio. Ball knocked away. Dalziel. Stevenson. Hands it back to Shepard. Hugs the wing and Moore oh, with a big crunch. Good mark, Brown. Yeah, good courage. Protected the drop zone. Good courage from Moore. He's a little bit sore. So Waters hobbling, but might be okay to play on. Rosa. One minute from half time. And what a half it's been for the Tigers. And if you have joined us late for Jack Rewald, as Wilkes sees it through his hands. Maybe one more left. Maybe a number seven for Jack Rewald. Oh. Cousins. He's just. Cousins is going sideways and backwards a little bit too much here. We've got Vickery on Waters at the moment. He just moves it quickly. Collins inboard. Farmer, 45 out. Good option. So really test his distance, I think. From outside 50. It's already the biggest lead of the game, 42 points. This to make it 48 at the long break. Got some toe on it, and Matt knew he didn't touch it. That's unbelievable. I just, uh, great kick from Farmer. <laughs> You've got to ask the question where was the spoil from either the Rapper Matt Nui or the West Coast defence? It, it wasn't that high over the goal umpire's hat. I think they all assumed it was just going to go off the boot. And again, Dwayne, there's your pet hate farmer coming off the ground. Remember the kick? <laughs> well, for 24 seconds left yeah, to half time, it beggars yeah. belief. He just completely missed the ball. Well, uh, uh, Jones. The thing with Nick Nat Murray when he went in, he went in direct line with the, the ball. He had to come in on the angle on a 45 degree with the kick from Farmer and then to spoil it through on the angle. He's, he's ran in with the flight of the ball, which makes it extremely difficult for the ball that's over your head to touch. Screwed up in the bow waters here. Oh, yeah, oh, oh friendly fire. He's got the pinball action from his teammate, yeah, Shannon, Shannon Hearn. He's a big boy, Shannon Hearn, too. Still some seconds left for a clearance. Clock stops at 15. Yeah. Oh. He is a very strong boy, Shannon Hearn. And so is uh, Bo Waters, of course. Jackson tried to affect the clearance. Cousins Better. does. Sends it inside 50. A half torpedo. Hearn can't take the mark. Ball in dispute. Comes out to Hearn. Is that ball? They'll have a shot at the goal. They won't. Oh, yeah. Umpire let it go. The umpire put the whistle to his mouth. He did, and the siren sounded. Oh. It would have been Rewalt's ball. He laid the end of the tackle. But it's Rewalt's day.
six goals to half time and a huge round of applause here from the Richmond fans. They lead by 48 points. The 11-5, 71. The 3-5, 23. Half time at the Melbourne Cricket Ground. Richmond and the West Coast Eagles. Tigers by 48 points. And if you've joined us late, six goals. <laughs> if you like to, Jack Rewalt, six goals to Rewalt. And everybody getting in position to see the rest of the Rewalt show. He has been an outstanding form. Five goals in the opening 19 minutes of this game. And one goal in the second term. And it would be nice to see him kick his biggest haul of his career. He's never had a seven goal day at the office, Jack Rewalt. He's headed there and maybe more. West Coast Eagles have their problems though. They would be in contention for the wooden spoon if they lose this afternoon. They'd be just one game ahead of Richmond on the ladder if they lose today. So a huge second half coming up here at the MCG for both these teams heading into the second half of the season. OK, Spud, you're the coach. As a former coach yourself, you've gone in, you're John Worsfold, you're with a team that was expected to win. You're playing the bottom side. You're eight goals down at half time. What are you saying to the lads? What do they need to do, the West Coast? Well, I don't you worry about double terming Revolt now because that's done and dusty. He's kicked a six. I think you just need to say to your midfield, get the ball. When we win it, spread. Spread and run. Any mark between the arcs, we play on immediately. Don't worry about the extra numbers. Get the ball down to Kennedy, Lacra, McKinley, and these type of players. Even push one of your Ruckman deep. And let's try and win the inside 50s. If we score, so be it. We yeah. haven't played our best game. So the Revolt scenario, yeah, disappointing. That, that half's done and dusted. We need to outscore Richmond this quarter by at least three goals. And to do that, we need to win the hard ball, but more importantly, spread. It's good to see that Nat Nui's gone forward with Kennedy, Lacra and McKinley. So at least they've got some options down there with Waters as well. Yeah, Bo Waters has gone forward, which is interesting. Second half underway. Graham and Cox go at it. Umpire gets out of the way. Rose with a little toe poke from hands and in danger. Even though that's not the wording of the rule, we all know what it is. It's been that way for 100 years. Edwards looks up. Rewalt's on the move. It's a wobbler. Impossible one to mark. Cochin did a good job attempting it. Cox, Hamble didn't hit the target. Dispossessed. Cochin back through traffic. Collins knocks it out. Tuck, Nat Nui, quiet first half. Embley, it'll slap on McKenzie, Stevenson, and now Nikoski. Runs into a tackle but gets the handball out to Rosa in time. Stevenson waters the wing and space. Scott Selwyn, short. Lacra left it for Kennedy. Well, get it in there. You've got one on one, Newman. And McKinley. And McKinley's got it in the pocket. That's a good play. That's a good style of play. Happy with that. The ball inside Richmond's forward 50, and they ran the ball on. They weren't afraid. First option footy. It was really good play. Well, it's exactly what you just spoke about, Spud, isn't it? Just rolling off the mark and getting it on quickly. And McKinley, at least your forwards know when, when to go then. If you know you're going to play on, you can just make initiate the move. But when you've kicked 0-2 for the game, this is a tough spot. Across the face, and it just scores. So three behinds and no goals so far for Ben McKinley. It's a positive start at least. Delidio. Well, he's been one of the playmakers for the Tigers. 15 disposals in the first half. Sends it long. Nat Nui sweating off on this end. Big fly. Great Mark Graham. Hands off to Jackson. And the Tigers are away again. Just bumped on the kick. Rebolt. That's a free. Got one to the ear. And didn't get the free. He's a star now. He has to earn them. Schofield pushed. No free. Edwards bumped in the side. Pack forms around it. Ball up. Good sure Nick Nat Nui there. Just he's very quiet. Yeah. Oh, no. nah. Don't hold. Well, it was a good mark from Graham. It but was, but Nick had to use his athleticism at least fly for that high ball. Then. He's such a young player still, so we'll give him a bit of due. Give him a bit of credit, I guess. But due is Dustin Martin. Collins, no one in the goal square. Cox getting back, and he gets there just in time. 
On the open side, the runners come. Nikoski gets there first. If you have joined us late, one of the two late inclusions for the West Coast Eagles, Nikoski and Brett Jones coming in for Swift and Adam Selwood. Nikoski, when he marked the ball, had to turn and go. He had three players up the ground. As soon as he went back on his heels, this is what's just allowing Richmond to get back behind the ball. This is a result of, of him not playing on. Mart Martin's in the middle of the ground in a lot of trouble. Dustin Martin, I'm not sure. It looks like he's uh, he's launched over. Can barely run at the moment. There he is. Waters finds Kennedy and he gets a 50. Kennedy will have the shot from about 30 metres out, depending on how generous. The umpire is. Okay, now Spud, you've got the numbers for Kennedy in this situation. What are they? Oh, he's been terrific. From set shots, he's going 85%, 23 goals for. He's kicked 22 1 from the corridor. Now we call this the corridor. And from 41 to 50, he's kicked 15 goals 1. So push and shove behind play, by the way. The odds are saying he just nails this pickers with this stunted runner. 33 goals, 6 for the year, all up. 34 goal six for the year and it's still on behind play. We'll see Cox and, and Graham there. Dustin Martin, not sure what happened to him. He was winded in the middle of the ground. I'm not sure that's the aftermath of what happened uh, in, in a clash there, but very good uh, start from the West Coast Earls. They've controlled the play to start this third quarter. And we just see here. What is he over the mark? He's trying to, oh no, it's the player there. Yeah, through the middle of the mark, so yeah, against Jake King. It's an amazing stat there, Dwayne. Was it 34 goals? Eight. Eight. And from six. Sorry, shot. 34 goals, six. Yeah, that's amazing with, with the run up. And the thing about it, he does the same run up every time. Yep. So, tried and true method for. Josh Kennedy. The worry is kids will start to mimic that run-up because it works. Well, you've got to feel comfortable in your own yeah. skin, Wayne. That's the, the secret. <laughs> Dustin Martin. <laughs> Speaking it? of comfortable in your own skin, he's very comfortable in his as Rewald is at the moment. He's got six. Peels back onto it. Can't keep it alive. Did well, Emily, there. Went and helped out. Schofield with the job now. Didn't start with that job. Back into play, Cox, front spot, and dropped that as he was tackled, lucky to get away with that. Ball shuffled out, Shepard, Hearn, little wobbler Nikoski, and beaten for it again, twist and turn Asprey, Newman, short inside 50, getting back, great Mark Jones. Yeah, they're all right. And Lacroix can get and go. There's no one in the square, he could load up, he just chips it wider. Waters from 50. He could go. He pokes it up. Kennedy can't oh, get there. Oh, Almost marked it. Goes back in. Topo at Lacroix. McKinley. Nice way to get your first. Yeah, good passage of play by uh, the West Coast. He was a captain. A bit of trouble yeah, here. Chris Newman's Newman. down. And he was the one that uh, turned the ball over down the other end. So it was extremely good gut running. Great courage from oh, Newman. Oh, a That's a knee job. from Asprey into the back here. I hope he's all right. No, oh. he, he's hurt. No, he's hurt. Chris Newman's as tough as they come. For him to not get up off the ground. Great goal from the Eagles, by the way. He's in a lot of trouble. I might need to stop play here. Chris Newman is tough, but it wouldn't surprise me if he had a broken rib or two. Asprey got him with a knee, and he couldn't have hit him harder if he tried. <laughs> Yeah, he's back on. He's running around, so... Yeah, it's a good effort, gee. Two in a row to West Coast, though. It was amazing how he got down there, because he turned the ball over yeah. inside the forward 50, so... He's a fit boy, Chris Newman. We know he's fit. We now know he's uh, tough, and that's why he's the, the Richmond captain. He's been through a bit. Strange, Richard, free, strange free there against Cox, so it's Graham's ball. He's been playing well. He's been very good. The Angus. So, Newman, he looks OK. Will bounce, stop, throws it on the boot, rebound, the leap! Got up there, couldn't bring it down. Prittis, Ebert, Dalziel, loops it back, McKenzie, McGinnity, outside of the foot, Nikoski two to beat here, in fact three to beat. Graham, Asprey, shortish to the middle, 
Collins score. couldn't mark. Spritter, Spritter. Did well. Gets it out to Jones. Right here, Lacroix. So McKinley heads wide instead of going long. Kennedy, Lacroix still moving. Lacroix's got some space. He's yeah. forced to prop. Might still get it. Asprey's a little spent. Grabs Lacroix. Still going for it. Diving in. Connors gave him some assistance. McGuan. And now Cousins can launch a rebound. Half-back flag held up. Might be the last time he plays against his old side. Today, Ben Cousins. Who knows what he's got ahead of him. Heads wide Earl. And the mark taken by Jackson. Yeah, kick him just to go back a step. The kick of Kennedy's to the crowd. Still did him no favours whatsoever. Had to kick the ball to grass. He's kicked it on top of his head, which allowed Ashby to come in with the spoil. Well, it would have been three goals in the first sort of eight minutes of the quarter. Collins. Well, it would have made the young Richmond midfield start to second guess himself. Yeah. They've been right on top. But they have worked their way back into it a bit this quarter. Cousins again, position number 11. Heads wide, what? He's a bit stop start these days, Benny Cousins. You know, he's such a great gut runner when he was at his best, but he becomes a bit of a sideways yeah. runner at the moment. He's just lost that, and that, that zip, that burst, that power off the mark. Ball heads back to Newman. I think he was called to the bench a few moments ago, Ben Cousins, but he didn't come off. And maybe because play was stuck on the outer side, and that's, that might be tomorrow's headline. Ben Cousins resisting arrest. <laughs> Head slung down the wing. He's stuck on when he's a little tired. White yeah, on the wing for Richmond. I see I was tricking the book. The potential didn't get the message. No right. trouble. Hands it up. Tuck. Bounces it. Overheads. Almost worked in his favour. Jones. Ebert. Tucked into the line. Uses the line. McKinley lets it roll out. Ball in. And now you think Cousins would come off. Nick Natter is close to the bench. Behind the play, you talk about Rewalt being the danger man. The simple instruction for Nick is when you're behind the play, just stand on the angle of Rewalt. And if he goes to the ball, you go with the high ball. So just went back there and spectated. You'll learn from that, Nick. Mason straight off the bench and laid a good hard tackle. Dowsy along. Kennedy got a hand to it. Connors back from that eight week suspension and playing well. Sends it long. King with a couple of taller players to beat and might beat them both. Can he get back onto it? Shepard gets there first. King is caught by Shepard. He's got it. Dragged oh, down. Trouble. And gone. But he held it up. Yeah, he did. He held it up. I thought he was a little bit lucky in the marking contest. Thought he went a little bit early, but good second effort from Jake King. Yeah, just had an opportunity there to get it out. The umpires are always going to ping once you drag it back in. Hearn to Wilkes. McKenzie. And Rewalt overcommitted there. Maybe okay to take the chance. And Waters, who was hurt in the second term, but looks okay now. Got Dalziel peeling for him too to beat Dalziel. And nice collect by the Lydia. Mason fresh on in the middle. Tandling. Rewalt's running inside 50. He's in a one-on-one. -on -one. He's about to pounce after the bounce. Schofield, Rewalt, Schofield, caught by Rewalt. Was that a legal handle? No way. And it'll line up for number seven. A little Schofield asked the umpire. He reckons he handballed the ball. He had to be aware that Rewalt was there. We'll have a really good look at it here. Schofield beats into the ball. Spills, gets it. Rewalt tackle. Great decision. Yeah, Perfect tackle. Was. Grab the arm. That's good pressure. It's the toughest shot he's had for the day. All quiet at the MCG. Bends it back a little. Not enough. That yeah, was good play. He's ranked number one also in the comp for tackles inside forward 50. So he's now leading to Coleman and he's leading the tackles inside 450. It's a good it's a good mix. My word is do you reckon that the uh, MCG scoreboard will get his name right? They've put Nick Rewan up a couple of times. Yeah they? they have. His name's Jack. We might have to remember who he is. He's a famous cousin of course. Hearn thumps it long. Nat Nui trying to get involved. Can't there. Brown does. Dow's eel. Wide ball. Moore. Brilliant there. Great play. Takes them on. Gives to Jackson. Centering kick to White. Great vision. 
Rewind going back to the square. Matt White likes his chances. Thirty-six points the margin. It was forty-eight at half time. A steadier here for the Tigers. Gets under it a little. And sends it way wide. Shepard. Bumped by Rewat on the kick and legally Dalziel. Well, this has been their best passage to play the Eagles. This is 10 minutes of this third quarter. 11 possessions now for Dalziel. Shepard. Short. Brown. Floats it back. Dalziel again. Uncontested football at the moment. Both sides are electing to have the full on zone. That's why we've got a lot of uncontested marks in this period. Good lead from Kennedy. Brown tried to hit him, but he's opposite number 17. Newman takes the mark to McGuan and thought he was Mick McGuan there. <laughs> tried to take them on and lost. Dalziel. I'd, I'd like to see West Coast doing that a bit more. You know, they're taking on the game a bit. Well, he's... Kennedy spoiled. Newman tunnels it out. White sidestep. Oh, good. That's gone. Kennedy. That's two from Kennedy. Ab absolutely great tackle. He's lifted. He's trying to inspire his teammates. He's already kicked a goal this quarter. Now two tackles. Short McGinnity from 60. Top of the square. Nikoski flies from four deep. Lacroix! That's his forte. They're back to a 31-point margin. A terrific play. Great opportunist goal there from Lacroix. But Kennedy with his two tackles. And then wheeled him go. The ball was 70 metres out. They just got the ball in there. They didn't worry about it. You see Josh Kennedy here knowing the hips. Perfect tackle again. It's the big improvement in AFL football the last 18 months. But just wheel and go there. Have a look at where he positions himself here, Spud. Oh, That's perfect. just sensational. <laughs> 27 goals for the season now for Mark McCraw. He's kicked 13 goals the last five games against the Tigers, so averaging over three a game. Well, the beauty of Lacroix is he's very strong overhead, he's very clever, and he's a clean player in the forward line. He's a bit like Paul Pleasure. Mark's a bit better than you think, and very, very good at ground level. And the All-Australian team is now picked not just on how many goals you kick if you're a forward or a forward pocket. It's your assists, it's your chase and tackles and smothers. They all add up now because stats are taken into account. Cousins sends it long. Kicked his boot off. Boot went 35. <laughs> and the ball 45. <laughs> Ebert knocks it out. Wilkes dragged down. Holding the ball. Nason's ball. Bo okay, Wilkes is loose man behind the play. Not, not a lot of awareness there. Free off the ball here. You know, you know that's actually happened here? Selwood threw Cousins' boot to send out forward. It's 50 metres there. It's a free yeah. off the ball. It's Richmond's ball because of it. And the 50 will take Mason to the goal line. And it's because Scott Selwood threw Ben Cousins' boot into the middle of the ground. Right. Well, there has been instances before of VFL footy boots into the crowd. He was kinder than that, but it results in a Richmond goal. Well, Selwood there saying, oh, well, I didn't know that was a rule. He got Ben Cousins' boot and chucked it 35, 40 metres the other way. He's got a case. No, that's, that's a bit, He's uh, got a very good case, Scott Selwood. Let's have a look here. So there's the boot on the ground. It might have been after. No, here he is. No, we'll see. There's the umpire on the spot. You can't do it, Dwayne. Well, what's no, the rule? They're, they're, I'm trying to think the exact terminology, well, on, but it comes under nasty. misconduct. Not a really rough along way. Along this line. you. So you're saying the AFL does have a rule that if you pick someone's boot up and you throw it away, that it's a free? Yes. Okay. What's, well, the, rule, what's the rule called? Well, right? I don't know what it's called. Well, but give it's, me something. I will find out by the give it three quarter time. No. I'll get on to the geesh. A yes. duly rough play? No, no, no. It's a, some sort of a misconduct scenario where they can award a free kick. What if the boot was in my line of running and I had to shift it? <laughs> Long kick towards Revolt. The Duck can't get a fly at it. White! Light white lightning! Oh. A 
I feel like the center clearance is in the middle. With all that over Trent Cotchin, I tell you what, it's a great building block when you've got a young midfield such as this. Absolutely terrific there. You can see Cousins is enjoying it playing with all these Richmond youngsters. We just get the ball in there, Cotchin, and just ball didn't go where it wanted to there from Bo Wilkes. He's the loose man in the back half. The ball actually went into the corridor at the spoil. Had to go wide, but great front and square. So had he thrown the boot over the boundary line for a safety issue, would that be a free? <laughs> it's Dwayne. Yeah, I'm uh, with you, Dwayne, on this one. No, Come on, Pickers, give, it, give me the I'm rule. I'm hitting the rule. I'm digging the boot. I must not throw at the boot. <laughs> I'm not throwing it. That's in the Bible. Well, you can't throw headbands these days. Thou shalt not <laughs> throw thine boot. Don't kick the boot. Cotch it. Axon inside 50. Schofield running through traffic. Embley, look oh, out the steal. steal. Edwards coming off a great first half. Likewise, Martin didn't seem to dispose of it legally there. Umpire let him off. Yeah, and he nice. shrugs and kicks toward goal. Nason stands under it. Oh. It won't matter. Superb! I'll tell you what Richmond have got. They've got a very exciting midfield. Delidio, Martin, Cochin, Foley to come back into this team. Young Edwards has had a beautiful game this afternoon, or a great game this afternoon. And the strength of Martin, uh, that's something to build a footy club on, is their midfield. And I reckon they're on the right track. That is just pure strength for an 18-year-old kid. Just strong play and a great goal. He's had a very good match. You're right, Pickers. Sometimes you have to create yourself what you want to be part of. Yep. You can't come to a club and expect the environment of the club to mould you. He wants to mould it himself. Well, that was just a great exponent of strength for a first-year player. Unbelievable. Two goals and just the recovery. Yep. Yeah. And then off one step with a West Coast player hanging off him. That, that is class. Written all over it from Dustin Martin. Stevenson wide. Nikoski sits under it. Newman attacks it with the fist and Nason pounces there away again. Tuck, Farmer, Rewald in a one on one. Well played, Schofield kept his feet up to the spoil. He's actually been uh, pretty good six quarter time, Schofield. Very good. Cox in the pocket. Well, he's only had the two kick done. Koski's out of business by the looks of it. Tamley went off with the shoulder there too. Yeah, that's bad news. A couple of minutes ago as well. So, a couple of players with shoulder injuries. Daniel Connors. Spoke to Stephen Johnson about his alcohol issues and have a chat to him about the skill issues. Matt knew it. Handballs it to Brown. Missed him. Kelvin Moore again attacked it and attacked it beautifully. Free kick, caught him too high. Cousins ball against Curtis. Cousins plays on wide. Nathan can get and go. Rewalt's lead is to the pocket. It's a floater. Free kick. And he gets the free. Rewalt's ball. Yeah, we have to know that Dan Cox was there. And that's the pressure of playing on the money man. Jack Rewalt, Will Scarfield will have a really good look at it here. You can see his left arm. Oh, no, not a lot in there. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot. Yeah. Oh, no. You're entitled to run alongside your opponent. Yeah, yeah, well, I was trying to be nice to the umpire. Like touch. Well, while you've been nice to the umpire, you haven't been nice to me with my misconduct stuff. Well, well I'm waiting for the rule of your <laughs> throwing the boot into it. That argument continues, it's going to pick your own shoe up and throw it out the window. <laughs> exactly. right. I think it's an occupational health and safety issue that boot is on the ground. I will have an answer to you before the end of this match. Jack Rewalt, huge kick this. This is for number seven for the first time in his AFL career. And probably not the last. Good goal. Great celebrations. Not sure whether it was deserved or not. The celebrations after the free kick, but 7-7 seven, seven and uh, as a key forward, the umpires are all over. We'll have another look here from Schofield. Yes. <laughs> Hope we don't start playing those consistently. Sort of half a grapple, just had his arm <laughs> on his bicep. There's no free kick there. Schofield's a little tap. Well, he's still frustrated there. Will Schofield without Blaney. 
it's a tough game playing as a defender when those ones go against you it becomes doubly tough especially when uh, when you go into him he's already kicked four biggest lead of the game 55 points Jackson hacks it towards attacking 50 this coast had numbers back but it's about to be a Richmond ball Edwards handles it behind Collins Connors Handball out just in time. Scott Selwood. Mark. Shrugs Great. and handles. Yeah. He is amazing for a young lad. Tuck. More from 50. He loads up. And he misses. Well, some of the greatest midfielders we've seen. Harvey, you can very, very rarely tack him, bring him to the ground. The modern day pickers, Chris Judd and of course Gary Ablett. Yeah. Dustin Martin, he, he gets the ball. And he's still in the game, even though he's got arms around his waist, because that handball there just explained it beautifully. Well, what it is, he's got a strong around the hips, and those blokes are really powerful around the hips and the backside. I mean, they're very hard to get off the ball. Waters, ugly kick. Farmer pounces. And they're about to reload the Tigers. There's a strife here. Connors made it tough for Jackson. A bounce pass through legs. Tuck. Long to revolt. He's got two to beat. Can't beat Cox. Well, I'm not sure why this wasn't happening in the first quarter, Spud. When the game was up for grabs, exactly that sort of stuff should have been there. Rosa to Prittis, back to Rosa, caught to half forward. And McKinley couldn't get anywhere near it. Graham's playing well. Jackson, handball inboard. Delidio, Farmer, they're all getting a piece of it. Farmer gives it away, though. Embley bounces his way towards 60. Bounced to bounce back to him kindly and heads right to Lacroix. Takes on Graham. Good tackle, Graham. It was superb for the big man. Little toe poke, McGuan was okay. Pounces and goes. And then goes back. Nothing to go to. Delidia. Arms free. Edwards. Sidestep. Tuck. McGuan. Connors. It's a bit easy here, isn't it, for Richmond? Moore. Floats it towards Cousins on the wing. Got hands there. No mark. Good contest. And the ball out of play. 56 points the margin. Here's Bo Waters. This is probably sums the West Coast Eagles up. He has a look up. He's got two free West Coast opponents. One there, one behind, another one behind Farmer. There he is there, McKinley. He hits the Richmond player in the middle. That about sums it up there, boy, used in the midfield this year. Not doing to eat, but he was grabbed without gathering. So 56 points. It was 22 points the margin at quarter time, 48 at half time. They've won every quarter so far, the Tigers. Can they finish it off? Jones. Shortish inside 50. Lacroix attacked it nicely. Stevenson lost it and then had to knock it out. McKinley, goal square. And Wilkes almost. Kennedy. A rare miss, but it won't count as a behind, so he maintains that 34-goal-6 record. Uh, it wasn't a set shot either, where he's got an outstanding 87% strike rate. Off one step. And that would have been in the old Nab Cup play on, but it had another shot. Rosa, pretty hard to kick it off the post yeah. and catch it back. Stevenson. Pokes it wide, Ebert. How are we going with that uh, rules, Pickers? Yeah, yeah, it's on its way. Got my people speaking to their people. Rosa. They'll come back to me. Dalziel. And that's a horrible it's handle. Just, handle. It's just sloppy. It's sloppy football, West Coast. Well, it's befitting a team that's in contention for the wooden spoon. Yeah, well, I don't think we can blame John Walsfall for the lack of easy targets. Here we go. I was going to say, it's not our worst from out there. Easy yeah. targets. Rewalt is hunting down number eight. White needs to give it back to him. He ignored him. Nason runs onto it. I'll oh, put it in the book. 62 points. Well, good on the Richmond midfield. The coaching staff improving over the last six weeks. That last 25 seconds explained where West Coast are and why Richmond are on the rise. They've got an easy possession, an easy handball. Grab down Zeal over to Embley. They turn it over and run into an easy goal. That is both sides' efforts this year.
There is the coach of the Tigers, Damien Harbert, coaching from the bench. But he did say during the week he likes to coach from there. Yeah. We'll like it a lot more, Dwayne, with this scoreboard. From the ball up. Coach from anywhere. Play like this. Did you ever get down there on there when you were coaching the Tigers, Bob? Oh, you ever make your way out of the box? I saw you open the window and have a... <laughs> Could not give out a bit of advice to some spectators on a couple of occasions. Not White that. towards Revolt, can't get a jump at it. Especially not uh, it out. later in the early days was okay, but uh, probably afraid to go down there later <laughs> in the <before> coaching. <laughs> well, there you go, Rewalt seven, Nason three. Gee, impressive play, Nason. From the ball He's in. Busy. Vickery knocks it down. Yes. Collins breaks free and slams through a behind. Now, the Tigers came in one win and ten losses. West Coast came in three wins and eight losses. The Tigers came in with 61% as their percentage, way off the West Coast's 83%. But they're about to get themselves within one win of the West Coast. And depending on what happens in the final term, eat into that percentage margin by a rather large amount. And they still have Richmond games against Port Adelaide, Adelaide, They've got a game against Melbourne and a game against North Melbourne to come this year, the Tigers. Cox flies. They are a genuine chance to win a few of those. Oh, were they? Yeah, we saw them all over Port Adelaide three weeks ago. And that was in Adelaide. The next game against Port Adelaide and the game against Adelaide, they're both here at the MCG. Yeah. Let's have a look at Shane Tuck there, lads. His game's gone to another level this year. We know he can win the hard ball. He's had the five clearances, nine contested possessions, but he's had... Four goal assists and his ball use. And that, that's been the uh, issue on Shane, but he's gone to another level this year since he's come back from the VFL. Well, he's worked very hard. He was a little bit unfortunate to be left out. I think he was third in their best and fairest last year when he was left out of the team. A couple of areas of their game that they wanted him to tidy up on, but he would be in their top five in their BNF this year, you'd think, for consistency after missing the first couple. Jackson the free. Rewalt's back in the square. It's in his direction. He's held, he can't get a jump at it. Got a half a hand to it. Cochin grabs it. And he misses. Well, look, yeah, it could have been another handball there from Trent Cochin, but the West Coast players will look at that passage of play. They'll wear that. Double up, triple up on Revolt. If someone else comes in to kick some goals, you'll be happy with it. But uh, it's been the Jack Revolt show in the seven. Here's Tuck, who you're talking about on cue. Short pass, Cochin to Collins. He's actually really clever by Cochin. Just the required 15. He goes to the pocket, back to Tuck. And he can have the shot. Had a strange career, Shane Tuck. He had a crack at Hawthorne where his father was a superstar. They didn't want him, went to West Adelaide. He had a heart problem that needed yep. surgery for a while, and that almost ended his career. Yeah, he was over in South Australia, and uh, I remember doing the testing on that Dwayne, but when he ran around the town, we thought, too, there's nothing wrong with his heart. Absolutely. <laughs> it was unbelievable pickers. And he's shown it here today that he's got improvement maybe still left in him. 30, 31 and 28 possessions in the three games coming into this one. And he's got 19 possessions at this point of the game to his name today. Well, he came in, I think it was something like 13-10 around the tan for the yeah. people in West Australia wondering what the tan is. It's a track we use over here, 3.8k. Ten seconds left here for a 4A forward, and it might be the West Coast to go forward. Stevenson towards half forward. Moore beaten for it by Kennedy. Seconds ticking down, heads to the goal square. Waters will mark it on the siren. It's paid. We stood up to eight. Oh, Waters, the acting skipper. Eight marks, none better than that one. Contested mark. Of course, he's from the club that we were talking about with Shane Tuck, West Adelaide. Blood and Tars in South Australia and kicks from 20 out and rams it through to cut the margin back to 59. But if you're a Tiger fan, sit back and enjoy. We've got another quarter left of this. 16-11, 107, plays 7-6, 48, and Jack Rewald has seven. On the ground, it might have been after. No, here he is. Now uh, we'll see. There's the umpire on the spot. You can't do it, Dwayne. Can't get a fly at it. White! Like white lightning! Oh. 
legal in there. Umpire let him off. And he shrugs and kicks toward goal. Nason stands under it. It won't matter. Ugh. This is for number seven for the first time in his NFL career. And probably not the last. Nason runs under it. I'll put it in the book. 62 points. Three quarter time at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, Richmond to 16 11, 107, West Coast 7 6 48, Richmond by 59 points. Jack Rewald has seven goals to three quarter time, and the West Coast Eagles have some big, big problems. Well, I've uh, investigated player misconduct, is okay. the rule. Is the rule for the boot yeah, throwing? Yeah, for the boot throwing, none of that sort of rubbish getting allowed these days. And that was actually, from the moment they did that, they kicked three goals in five minutes. This was it, Scotty Selwood thought he was being a bit funny. The pie wasn't all that through. I think if it had gently thrown that just to the boundary line, as a safety issue, it would have been okay. Yep. yep. Moving back to position, the star of the show, Jack Rewald, seven goal afternoon. They will win this, the Tigers. They've lost their eight of their past ten against the West Coast. Round eight, 2002, was the last time Richmond defeated the West Coast here at the MCG. It's just a matter of the margin now. Well, the story is, can he kick ten goals, Dwayne? I know you're the king of the stats. When's, who's the last forward to kick a bag of ten double figures? And when was it? Probably Jonathan Brown a few years ago at the Gabba. Well, probably you'd know that. <laughs> 2000, what was it? 2007 against Carlton, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure. And for Richmond, it would probably be Richo back in 2004, the last Tiger. Uh, against the Bulldogs. Uh, you were coaching, Danny, so you would remember that. Well, funny enough, Dwayne, I do remember that one, Pickers, and about 10 minutes before the game, the medical staff and Richo come up and said, I've got a bit of a strained hamstring. Oh, really? <laughs> and he's ended up slotting 10. Just a lazy 10 with a, with a PB, hammy. PB with a hammy. How many he's handballs that day Richo <laughs> dished off, do you think? Uh, half of one. <laughs> Not quite one. Tuck. Got a kick away. It's three metre kick, but effective. Jackson runs back into trouble. Nat Nui. Grab. Fend. Handball. Brown gives it up. Waters. Sam McKinley from the pocket. And that's why you should elevate your kicks occasionally. Not try and roll them home all the time. He could have kicked an easy drop punt goal there. Deledio short and Prittis yeah, he's been gets a present. Just had to say, his ball use has been great, Deledio. And uh, it was ball use because it was a pretty kick place out to Prittis. But unfortunately, it uh, <laughs> wasn't his teammate. But he's been terrific. 22 disposal, just see here. And yeah, threaded the murder, the wrong option there. They've lost all three quarters so far at the West Coast. Can they eat their way into this lead and get some respectability back? Prittis should have nailed that. But that's been the tale of their day, the West Coast. They've lost their past three this season, and it'll be four in a row now, and they have the Western Bulldogs and Subiaco next Sunday before they get their two weeks off with the split round. Well, it's been the tale of the year, Dwayne. they ranked 15 for kicking efficiency. And John Morsfold, I can't believe he hasn't gone grey because he can't kick it for them. He's not going to get easier shots on goal on that one. The tackle farmer, Prittis. Dragged down, couldn't dispose of it legally. White, gang tackle, he's dragged down. Tried to shuffle it out, and it was shuffled back in under him, and we'll get another ball up. The West Coast Eagles have never won a wooden spoon. Their worst season in club history was 2008, when they finished 15th. By the way, the club made a $4.7 million profit that year as the 15th finishing team, so it didn't affect the club overall all that much, but... They are headed for a very low finish again this year and maybe worse than 15th. As Nick Nat knew he liked his opportunity to kick a goal here and add some respectability to his stats tally. I'm not sure where Graham was there because Deledio was up against Nat Nui. That's why the, the free kick was there. This is his first kick. Nick Nick. Nat Nui gets onto it, but gets onto it wide. Yeah, one kick, four handballs, no marks for Big Nick today. Just see here, 
Deledio trying his hardest to hold him down. That well picked up there by the umpire. The decision. Certainly a free kick. McGuan, back pocket, got close to the man on the mark. Puts it up long, and Embley had a good piece of it, and then dropped it. Prittis, arm grab, Embley, hands it back, McKenzie. There's a chance here again, the West Coast. McGinnity floats it wide, Lacroix. Moore! Oh, good grab. Huh? Over the top, big grab. So well, the confidence of building. When you get your defenders. Got an ankle, I reckon you'll find here, boys. Landed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did he? Yeah. Yeah, it's the right ankle. He's out of business. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, oh, he's, he's landed on the boot of uh, Lacroix. Rolled it. It's just a little inch, isn't it? If he lands on the grass, he's sweet. He's sweet. If he lands on the side of his foot, he's rolled his ankle and he's out for the rest of the game. And with a 56-point lead, no need to leave him out. Yeah, he's coming straight off the ground. Edwards slides past a couple. Remolt's on the move. Edwards sees him run back to the square. Puts it up high. Remolt has to come back to it. Jones got there. Didn't mark it. White dives in. McKinley got the arm free. Critters from half back. Scott Selwood. Mitch Brown. Good option. So Kennedy from 50. Does he want to go for goal? And Lacra, a very good option as well. And line up from 40. It's quite hard, Kennedy. He's kicked the two goals. 15 disposals. A lot up the ground today, though, Spud, wasn't it? Not, not so deep as he has been. Yeah, a lot outside 50, a lot of his marks. Four scoring assists though, so this has been their worst play. Twenty has ahead of him. Nice off the boot. Struck that beautifully. Cuts the margin back to 50. He's a clever player, the bra. He's averaging three over three goals a game against the Tigers. We just see here Kennedy. He knows what's expected as a forward. He's probably been frustrated today by the slow ball movement. So as soon as he's got the ball in that area today, he's playing on instantly because that's what he wants as a key forward. He wants a one-on-one -on -one there, and he just looked up beautifully. They've got good connection, Kenley and McGrath. The unfortunate part about it, the ball use just hasn't been silver service to those two lads. Three goal afternoon for Mark Lacroix, 28 for the season. You're not going to win too many games with 35 entries, and that's all I've had the West Coast today, which has made it very difficult for forwards. And the ball up, Graham, little palm down, Prittis. Caught a little high by Jackson, got the handball off, Natanui, Cox, Selwood, Dalziel. To half forward, McKinley, Kennedy both went for it, Lacroix read it beautifully. It's all about the bounce. It sits up, and Farmer can knock this through. Clever stuff. Sort of sums up how a game of footy can be. You did the game yesterday down in Tassie. Luke Hodge burst down the middle, yes. kicks one and spun more than a Tim May off break. And then that one there, the West Coast having a dirty old afternoon. Instead of just tumbling through like you'd normally expect it to, it holds up. Yes, it's You're been right. the tail of their day. High kick towards oh. Cox. Hack forward, Cousins by Tuck. Edwards. Sidestep, floats it up in the King direction. Emily with the big spoil to the boundary side. Hearn shoots the handball all the way back to Schofield. And he's got Wilkes or Stevenson. Goes to Stevenson. Even. Of course, for our uh, younger viewers, we don't know who Tim is. have got no idea who Tim, Tim May is. is. Yes. <laughs> he did play for Australia for a lot of years ago now, but we'll call him a Murley type bounce. How's that sound? What about Shane Moore? <laughs> uh, he's a leg spinner. Okay. This is dead. Nice right play there, too. Tamlin tried to thread the handle through. Embley steals it, and Dalziel can run. Kennedy's on. And it's a good pass to him. Lacroix inside 50, calling for it short. Ignored. McKinley, not ignored. And hit well with that pass. But he's been a little iffy in front of goal today. Ben McKinley as Mason comes off with a hobble. So he's kicked the one goal three. McKinley. Long run up. Right 
one goal that he did kick was soccer off the ground from the goal square. He's missed all his opportunities from this kind of distance. But he puts that through his second of the afternoon. Two goals, three. It could have quite easily been a four-goal game for Ben McKinley. But again, Josh Kennedy. He's been probably their most uh, influential forward, getting two goals and having now yeah, five goals, scoring assists. And his ball use forward to the centre has been terrific. Good option there to McKinley. And went back and kicked truly. Got a shot there in the first quarter. It takes him alive. Good kick. Four goals against St Kilda, his best this year, Ben McKinley. Three goal week last week. Two goals this afternoon. Well, that's six scoring shots to start of this last quarter to zero. So, is it the West Coast Eagles playing well or Richmond have put the cue in the way? Well, I think Richmond maybe has spent a lot of their petrol tickets and the West Coast have saved a few up. Brown and Even. Handles it back over the top. Newman hunts it well, down. Well, Big give a shot of Waters and Newman. Both get up, both okay. White short, horrible kick. West Coast with the numbers <laughs> in each other's way. <laughs> What's going on there? Well, everybody makes mistakes, but some West Coast Eagles players have yeah, abused the privilege today. He's hurt too, he's hurt his shoulder. Floats it towards half forward. His left shoulder, it's Brett Jones, I think. Rosa keeps it alive. Waters. And he'll be coming off. Late inclusion, Brett Jones, and won't see out the game. Delidio Long. Rebo uses the arms to fend off. Still a chance to grab this. And it's trapped under Cousins. He's got a left uh, corky too, so he's in a lot of pain. He's got the left shoulder and the left leg. Let's have a look at this. Uh, that's that the was Waters hit. And, uh, and that's as tough as they come. Uh, that one just needs a bit of Benny Hill music. <laughs> yeah, the left shoulder with there. It. Two is just sort of sums up the dirty old day they've had the coasting, unfortunately. Edwards sends it in the Jack Rewald direction. Can't get a jump at it. Front of the pack. Tries to crumb it. Could go off the ground. Oh. Put him down for eight. And eight of the best. Unbelievable goal. Great recovery. I thought the Eagles did really well, but the issue was. They all went up and half spoiled each other, and the ball just spilt down, which allowed Revolt to get in. You just see the West Coast Eagles here, Cox, and the ball spills off the boot. With Bo Wilkes, I think it was, too. He just come in here, didn't get a fist on it at all, it's hit Cox on the shoulder. <laughs> Supporters. We've got a new hero. Matty Richardson was retired last year, the superstar. They're yeah, saying, so, gee, who are we going to hang our hat on for the next few years? Well, step up Jack Revold, who's leading the Coleman medal now by a couple of goals. It's amazing effort. It's amazing effort considering he's in a team that's only won this, is only their second win. So you put him in a team that was winning a lot of games with a bit more supply. Too high, West Coast free. The yeah. issue is the three Eagles boys all had a chance to get a piece of the ball and not one of them. Got a piece of it, just landed down, and Rewald said, OK, I'll just kick an easy goal. A little flick down by Lacra, pack forms. So Jack Rewald came into this game with 35 to his name. Eight today, now has 43. Brendan Favola and Matthew Pavlich are on 39, but they are yet to play. They will play later on this afternoon. And, of course, what a feast of footy for West Australian footy fans. This hasn't been all that enjoyable unless you're a Frio fan and you get to watch Fremantle and St Kilda straight after this. Yeah, there'll be a lot of disappointed West Coast supporters but certainly some uh, some Frio supporters will be excited about the game that follows this one tonight. Critis handles back, Tambling caught high by Ebert, but not reportable. Are getting very good at not actually going through that that bump these days. Yeah. Tamlin puts it up. Jackson and Vickery and Cox. Vickery wins. Hands off the tuck. Revolts in a run on one. He's on the lead. Schofield with him. Attack the half volley nicely. Bumped off it. King. Vickery. Mason back on. Jackson got the arms free, looking for a handball option. Dalziel. Curtis. 
Turn through traffic, nice. Nothing wrong. Nothing Rosa. Wrong to kick two. Yeah. Hands it back inboard, Shepard. Dalziel, Stevenson, Brown. Might be a turnover here. Shepard ties it up and we'll get a ball up. He's owned up beautifully in this area of the, the ground, Richmond. They haven't forced, they haven't allowed West Coast to get that launching zone just forward of the centre to be able to get it north of 30. They've really protected the area of the ground here beautifully by corralling and, and pressure. Edwards sends it wide. A race on. Bouncing ball. Griffiths can't get there in time to hold it up. Work short, Embley. And turn over. Cousins. Looks up. Remind. Look out. He's got it. He'll line up for number nine. Yeah, no, no one should lead now. Yeah. No Richmond supporters. Forward should try and get on the end of a little short pass. Let him go back. Kick his ninth. Go two. Two he's missed, haven't missed by much either. Oh. Nine, and that won't score. Still right. another ten minutes and change in this game though. You'd love to know what he's thinking walking in. Have I got a bag of ten? Because look, it's easy to miss, but you just think of his mindset if he focuses on kicking the goal, because he's one of the best set shots you'll see in the game. It's certainly worked on his technique. The excitement, uh, the adrenaline must be bubbling through his veins at the moment. Though. Well, all the Tiger fans are at that end of the ground. I think there's more here in the second half than there was in the first half. Words got around. Oh, they sniffed a win. They've turned up here. Arms around, hold free. Nat Nui's ball. to move it on. Richmond meet Brisbane at the Gabba next week and then have their two weeks off. West Coast, as I said earlier, with the Western Bulldogs at Subiaco. And then they have the split round break. Waters crunched a couple of times today. We're looking forward to a rest. Embley. And he has, at Wembley, his 200th in a few weeks' time. Big celebration coming up for him, but it'll be Richmond to celebrate shortly. Connors. White. And he's got Graham over the top. Hasn't seen him. Backtracks. Takes some time. Graham can't play well, on. He's been now. good. He yes. has 13 handballs today. This will be his first kick. Well, he's trying not to kick it. <laughs> <laughs> there it goes. And Rebop, the man he goes for. Yeah, Rebop with three to beat here. And Cox, the tallest of them. Yeah. Yeah. He's a really improved player, Big Angus. Got the kick away just in time. Edwards, well, he went for the man and not the ball. Kennedy's ball regardless. 113 to 64. It's going to be a monster win for the Tigers. Wilkes, wide, and McKinley takes the mark, 48 out. Here's Richmond kind of came into this game with the better form depending on how you want to read the stats. The West Coast came in with three losses in a row and Richmond had won one of their past two but it depends on how you read the stats. Richmond overall had actually come in having won one of their past 15. This is a huge win for the Tigers. Great for their conference tonight. And for a new coach and a new team building. McKinley struck that magnificently through the middle. Well, again, he's kicked three goals three now. Then McKinley. There's a half forward. He's got six scoring shots on the board. Good ball use here. That's been their issue. When they they run the space beautifully, West Coast, and when they use the ball. It's no different than any other side, and they, they play in quickly. It's just their issue at the moment has been when they've turned the ball over through the midfield, some of their turnovers have been indefendable. Well, well the question you have to ask is, was it real form we saw last week against Geelong, which is really encouraging, or were the Cats just a bit off their game? 
because this sort of performance today is unacceptable when you're playing a team who's won one game for the year and on the bottom of the ladder. Anyway, you look at it. Cochin's ball, Richmond will get the clearance. Especially when you look at the fact that they've only had nine less disposals than Richmond, so it's basically... There he is. on the move! Got it! And almost 50 for the push. Now, yeah, right, if, if he kicks this, Dwayne, I'm going to run down and interview him. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm going down and interview him if he kicks this. What, during the last seven minutes? No, or after, after game, right. I'm going to make a beeline. Just off the screen there, it was trippy play from Matty White to keep his direct opponent in Patrick McGinnity out of the play. From 50 for number nine. Bends it back a little. For eight, is still going to be a magnificent day at the home of football for Jack Rewald. It will still be his best ever haul turnover. He's still got some opportunities here. They move the ball quickly. West Coast getting numbers back. Sends it high. Vickery flies into it, back of the pack. Cox lurking over it. Tries to hand it out. Cox had attacked it nicely. Ball still alive. King. And he towed that over the boundary. That was on the full. Well, McGinley thought it was. I'm a long way away. <laughs> and Jack King, he's been lively though as a half forward. Jackson got it from Tuck. Mason, goal square. McGinley with him. McKenzie can accidentally fumble it through. Now he takes it out deliberately. <laughs> because the rules are actually different for deliberate out of bounds or a deliberately rushed behind. Well, it was well disguised, Wayne. I think he always knew what he wanted to do. Well, Matt Newell with the palm down. Free kick out of this. There's a hold. And it's going to Rewell. Jack Rewell's ball. And he should kick his knife. Yeah, I'll have to have another look there, Dwayne. <laughs> it's amazing how you can give a free kick away in this area of the ground. You see Schofield, yeah, well picked up. That's definitely a free kick, holding onto his left arm. That's just the pressure of playing on a, a guy who's white hot at the moment, white hot form. There'll be a huge roar. There's a new king of Tigerland. Well, amazing. The last tiger to kick nine Wayne was Matty Richardson round 21, 2006. And he was the hero of the Tiger faithful down that punt road as we see the free kick there to Jack Rewalt on Bill Schofield, well picked up by the umpire. But they've got a new hero down there at punt road now, and his name's Jack Rewalt. Nine. Can he kick ten? That's the question. It's probably appropriate the World Cup's on right now. Jack Rewald played soccer until he was a 12-year-old. His grandparents, German immigrants, Helga and Heinz, came here. Soccer was the sport they knew. And he's grown into our game. He followed his famous cousin Nick, who inspired him to play AFL at the age of 12. Jack Rewald, instead of the game of soccer. And what a day he's having. McGuan, there's another six minutes for Jack Rewalt to kick number 10. We'll see Dean Cox in the ruck there. He's running back to try and double team Jack Rewalt. White got it from Connor, sends it long. And getting back Waters, saving Mark. 22 minutes gone. Cox. Schofield. Dalziel. If you haven't been watching the whole game, Jack Rewalt. Five goals in the opening 19 minutes of this game. One goal in the second term, one goal in the third, two so far in this last quarter. Waters, Embley, Cox. Embley. Shortish to half for Delidio in the hole. The crowd urging every Tiger on, get it down there. They want double figures for Jack. Newman thought about calling for it back again. He might still get it. 
Palmer caught the play on. It's got Delidio inboard and he missed him completely. Horrendous. Embley, McKinley, Embley, Dalziel probably deserves a goal for his efforts today and slides it home. And a very good player today, Brad Delzeal. It's well called Dwayne. He did deserve a goal. He's worked hard. Played on the wing. He's worked both ends of the ground. He's got the 22 disposals, 10 handball receives, three inside 50s, and three rebounds. So he's hard running. He's rewarded with a the goal there. It's one of the positives there for the West Coast Eagles. Twenty to seventy-six. Still plenty of time for the ten, magical ten, Dwayne. That's Absolutely. all that's left in this game. We've got four, a bit over four minutes left. And Jackson with the clearance. Wobbles at the half forward. Tough ball to Mark. Fantastic grab by Waters. It's been outstanding as captain today. Might as well super. Caught though. Gets the handball away. A collision between two Eagles. Mason, Cousins, Mason. Rewald says, go. "Give it to me." He's about to jump and go. Off hands. King had it slapped away from him, but he's about to pounce regardless. Embley with him on the boundary. Cousins. Hard. Curtis wraps him up. No prior opportunity. Ball up. The winner is to see whether David Harwick sends his half forwards Wayne to come up outside the forward 50 and whether West Coast react to that. You see Dean Cox, he's not going to even go to the ruck contest here. You see him at the top of the screen. He's walking back to stand in front of Jack Revolt. Ball thumped out by Nat Dewey. Three minutes 32 left on the clock. No AFL player has kicked a bag of 10 in the last three years. There's Damien Hartwick coaching from the bench. Jonathan Brown in 07 at the Gabba. The last player to do it. Rewalt has a chance here. Collins. Tark. Sends it to the goal square. It's it high. Rewalt. Schofield. Rewalt! The pictures here paint a million words. The crowd on their feet. Well, just have a look. Sheer strength. Oh, that's pure, beautiful vision there, protecting the drop zone. They haven't had a lot to cheer in the last few years, the Richmond fans. We try and run around a bit. For number 10. The new hero has double figures and Richmond are going to have their biggest win for the last few years on the back of their new superstar. I have a look at every Richmond player, Dwayne. That's fantastic. Look at the Richmond faithful. They've had a few lean years. Every Richmond supporter is out of their seat applauding the new hero, Jack Rewell. When you see the mark there, every Richmond player, even the fullback, Luke McGuan, Ren Downs, you have another look at the goal here. Just watch the Richmond Faithful stand up as one. And it's just amazing to see the crowd here. Oh, that's fantastic. What great vision there. You see the Richmond Faithful and the emotion of Jack. He knows the punt road end. That is an amazing story there. The last player to kick 10 goals for Richmond was Matthew Rich Richardson, round 10, 2004. Nadanui with the clearance. The crowd here in awe of their new hero, Jack Rewalt. And he has demolished the West Coast Eagles. The West Coast have kicked 11 goals. Rewalt is one goal behind them with 10. Ebert to line up to make it 12 for the Eagles. Oh, it's just an amazing story. It's the Jack Rewalt show. He's taken seven contested marks, Mike. The average for teams is about four and a half to five. He's taken seven on his own. And even misses to the near side. They came into this game as the favourites, according to the bookmakers, Richmond. But who would have thought? At one stage, they led by 10 goals, Richmond. They led by 22 at quarter time, 48 at half time. Did lead by over 60. And they currently lead by 49. And this one's not done yet. Has he got number 11? 
Remont up to half forward. Goes to the marking contest. McGinnity hands it back. Waters. Remont doing some chasing. Prentice. So. Waters. Sends it to half forward. Big punches come. Nat nearly off hands. Takes them on and loses. Holding the ball. Everybody was writing Richmond's season off early. They say you learn more from a loss than a win. And at one stage this year, Richmond looked like finishing this season as one of the smartest teams of all time. And they're not going to be quite as clever at the end of the season as we thought they'd be. Cousins from halfback. Well, they are too, reinvigorated man. on the back of some of their young stars. And while Jack Rewalt has stolen the show, Dustin Martin has risen to the challenge. They have been inspiring to watch. Collins. Rewalt at half forward. Bouncing ball. Flicks it on. Half held. No free. White dives in. Stevenson with him. Ebert. 30 seconds left and a smother for Asprey. Another one of their young stars trying to make his way. I'll tell you what, when you look at the young stars, Revolt 10, Martin in the middle. Deledio is another guy. He's in a leading position, get 25 disposals. Been tremendous. McKinley. Rosa. Scott Selwood. And even though it's a huge grab, to the Lydia over the top, even though the horror tale in this is the West Coast Eagles are a contender to win the spoon. It's worthy only to talk about the Tigers after this. It's all about them and it's all about him. The 10 goal hero, Jack Rewald, and the 49 point winning heroes, the Richmond Football Club, and their hopes this season resurrected by their new god. 19 12. 126 to 11 11 77 and you couldn't write this script everyone that came here today hoped for something special they got more than they could ever wish for now the richmond faithful Dwayne, that's you've got a feel for the tiger army they're up as one this is unbelievable scenes here for the tigers it's their second win for the year but they've done it in Emphatic style, and the, the stars all around the ground, but obviously, you know, it's going to be Jack Revolt's so, over. Deledio is terrific. Shane Tuck, you see Ben Cousins there shaking the hands of his former teammates. He must be loving this. He'd be reinvigorated playing with these young midfielders. Dustin Martin, Trent Cotchin, Collins, McGuire, their defence with Super. Edwards also is terrific with a number of disposals. And, yeah, it's going to be a long journey back. They only had five more disposals in the West Coast Eagles, yet they've won by eight goals. Did you hear that Tiger theme song in the background? Just absolutely unbelievable there. Chris Newman, he's tough as they come. He looked like he was down and out nice and early. Fantastic scenes here. It might be the last time Ben Cousins plays against his old team. We understand that Jack Rewald has declined the opportunity of a one-on-one -on -one interview because he wants to soak this up as part of the team and not make it all about him. Yeah, we'll head down to the skipper, Chris Newman, who's talking to Liam Pickering. Yes, uh, Chris, well done today. What a great win. Uh, we couldn't get a hold of Jack because he's uh, he's been put on ice because of his performance. Ten goals today, what a performance. Yeah, he's trying to keep a lid on, I think, but um, it was terrific. You know, he's, he's really proved himself to be one of the strongest contested marks up forward, so... We just need to give him supply and um, hopefully he kicks the goals. What about the atmosphere here, mate? I'm not sure what the actual crowd is, but uh, certainly everyone involved. Fantastic crowd. That's the beauty of our supporters. They turn up no matter what, and, um, you know, they're probably the loudest supporters uh, in the league. Where do you uh, put this win? I mean, obviously you had a win a couple of weeks ago, which was a real tough win over in Adelaide, but a win where you actually went into the game favourites. Yeah, it was a bit different. Um, but, uh, yeah, I was really proud of the boys. I, 
We were born in Bells, I reckon, uh, early on in the week when we were favourites, so I just wasn't quite sure how a young group could handle it, but uh, they were fantastic today. What about your ribs, mate? I saw you go back. That was a bit of friendly fire. I think that might have been young Dave Asprey. Gotcha. Yeah, I'll give him a, yeah, a bit of a spray, but yeah, they're a bit sore. But well, enjoy the win, mate. I think we might have unearthed a bit of a star here this afternoon with uh, 10 goals to Jack Rewald, so well done. Fantastic scenes here at the MCG. 10 goals, 3 to Jack Rewald. If you weren't with us for the entirety, he started in an amazing opening term where he kicked five goals in the first 19 minutes of the game. He had five to quarter time, only added one, Schofield went onto him, only added one in the second term, then one in the third term, then three last quarter goals for Jack Rewald. He finished with 10, he now has 45 for the season. He is the leader in the race for the Coleman medal. Brendan Favola and Matthew Pavlich, six goals behind him on 39 goals. Are they still to play today? Brendan Favola and Matthew Pavlich. Jack Rewalt about to lead his team from the arena. Well, we've asked again Dwayne for an interview, and fair enough to I suppose, but a lot said about Jack Rewalt and his body language and maybe a little bit of overconfidence, but I'll tell you what, He's kept me a lid on it, which is fantastic. It's all about the team for Jack. So, you know, as you said, getting 10 goals is just an amazing game of league football. You know, especially the way sides double, triple team, key forwards now. Judy Donnelly there, the media manager for Richmond. She's excited. Obviously talking to Jack about uh, what's to be expected over the next week or so. Well, I'm a little disappointed, to be honest. I have to, yeah, oh, I have to say that. I'm disappointed Jack oh, Rewalt right. declined the interview. In big-time sport around the world, the superstars, Kobe Bryant and Co, they don't do that. But each to their own. Let's have a look at the positive. It was Richmond's day. 32-point winners. A fantastic performance. 19-12, 126 to 11-11. 77.